and we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. Yeah, you know the deal. We back again. Yo. A round of applause for Jersey's finest. A lot of content creators not worthy, but they minus. They get offended and start singing like the whiners. Talking like they tough, but it's only screaming and whining. My homie just do us the catch you don't come to Your squad get run through By the time you come to, you duck food You suckers talk tough on the internet Revealing all your threats Now we got you trapped in the net Just do, be on this grind Y'all better hustle up You deadlifted 90 pounds We doing muscle ups There's really no comparison His voice sound like a derringer Throwing a towel, it's just embarrassing My dog just very philosophical And psychological and he mixed it all with good boxing news. These YouTubers feel like Bishop, I guess they got the juice. But it's lonely at the top to just to feel like child abuse. Be respectful, he don't want to talk wild and loose. If you can't relate, you get dismissed like a mild dispute. These weird cats will tell lies, then they hide the truth. Why beyond views? You lose your life when you collide with dude. It's just do boxing. Or you cowards quit jocking. Kirk is official with no other options. Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. Judah Ben, we in the spot. Just do boxing. Yeah. And of course, shout out to Mrs. Doom. Holding the whole family down. Word them up, word them up. family how y'all feeling it's your boy we back again we back again to get boxing is just do anybody that catch the playback smash the like button sub to the channel drop a comment in the comment section come rock out with your boy we back again man good monday got a few things to talk about man it's always a good boxing conversation over here y'all know it Hope everybody's feeling good on this good Monday. You know what I'm saying? New week. New fight week. I believe this is uh, Roley's fight week. This is Roley fight week, man. Who would have thought, man? Roley messed around. Be a champion come this weekend, man. Adolfo, what's good with it, family? How you feeling? Yeah, he's here now. He is here now. They call him a lightweight, though. They say he's he going to be at lightweight. They say he's going to be at lightweight. Morales was pissed. Yeah, he trolling. Man, Morel, Morel punished him already. I don't know what kind of trolling he doing. Jose Diaz, salute, brother. How you feeling? So you could be in your ass here. One more time, it'll be your last. You know it. You know I got that quote. Salute to Adolfo, man. How you been, bro? Miss Just Do, salute to my baby girl. How you feeling? Appreciate you stopping through. Peace. And love to the host first and foremost thank you all for coming to the show show him love and support smash that like button on the way in yes sir queen yes queen mike biggs boxing my brody what's happening with it mike biggs how you feeling bro miss joette salute to the queen how you feeling today appreciate you stopping through shawala salute to the queen how you feeling today salute to the famo how y'all feeling how y'all feeling Hope y'all in the mood for some boxing talk. You know, putting in we've been putting in a lot of work over here, man. So we're just gonna keep it going, you know. 
Well, we got a few things to chop it up about. But I wanted to make this about Andy Cruz a little bit, man. You know, shed some light on Andy Cruz. At the end of the day, he did just sign with Matchroom, right? He signed with Matchroom. You know, he 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 had some interesting things to say about Tank Davis. He called Tank Davis an average fighter. He said Tank is an average fighter. And he said he tired of beating Keyshawn. He said he beat him one, one more time. That would be it for him. You know what I'm saying? So I like Andy Cruz. I like his energy. I like the trash talk. I like a number of different things from this kid. He, he's he's very confident and for good reasoning. You get what I'm saying? For good reasoning. You know what I'm saying? So he's finally here. I, for one, I root for guys that, that have difficult time becoming pro and like the stuff that i was hearing about andy cruz getting caught trying to leave cuba and different things like that and the fact that he all of that is behind him now and he signed officially to match room that's dope for the young for the young uh for the young fighter man for the young cuban fighter man so this is a, a sincere salute know what i mean and big ups to andy andy cruz for for having an opportunity to continue his career as a professional i think that's dope and like i said his backstory is amazing man he went through a lot to get here and he ain't even had a pro fight yet but he went through a lot to get to this point from what i understand so again man big salute to andy cruz man for you know sticking with it man sticking with it chop what's good with it chop how you feeling my bro mr chop top how you feeling my bro appreciate you stopping through y'all punch on the like button one time for you bro we're gonna have us a nice boxing build, man. Salute to the fan. But yeah, man. So we got a few things to talk about. Um, and then you know, there been two recent big signings. I say big signings to me because they looking at Andy Cruz as one of the best amateurs in the world, like ever. You know what I'm saying? Ever. Cuban amateurs ever. You know what I'm saying? We know about the Lara's and you know, things like that. You know, we was all hit to Vasil Lomachenko, but from what I'm understanding, Andy Cruz is of that ilk. He's of that cloth. So give him time. I believe he's a two-time Olympian as well. So gold medalist. So um, you know, it's gonna be a lot of eyes on this dude. And I think um, you know, that the the expectation level is gonna be high for Andy Cruz coming in, and for good reason. Like I said, anytime you can medal in the Olympics more than once, you get what I'm saying? You're gonna be looked at as one of them guys. So we're gonna see. Salute to Chop, man. Appreciate that, fam. We appreciate you. D-Man, my bro, what's happening with it, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. And what's happening with it was good with you. So the two recent signings, you know, both being Regis Progray and Andy Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Um, Eddie Hearn is vouching big time for, for Andy Cruz. And part of it is him just being the promoter that he is, right? And I do think the other part of it is him really believing that Andy Cruz is already the best lightweight in the world. You get what I'm saying? Eddie Hearn is already on record for saying Andy Cruz is the best lightweight in the world. Matter of fact, I got a small clip that I'm gonna play for from him so y'all can hear what he said. We're gonna talk about that. We also gonna get into um, you know, we spoke a little bit briefly about Regis Progress signing with Matchroom, right? But he also did an interview and he explained. He went into depth a little bit more as to why he made the, the, this decision and what led to it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to give Regis the benefit of the doubt because he's a real fighter. That's all he's been. So I'm not going to start thinking that he don't want to smoke all of a sudden. Right. So it's all it's probably more than more than likely it's a method to his madness. So we're going we're going to talk about that, man. Like Andy, I can't wait to see what he does in the States. Me too, Mr. Joe. I can't wait. Jim, my bro, what's happening with it, man? Salute to you, bro. We appreciate you stopping through as always, family. How you feeling, bro? Feel like it's some state for Andy signed with Eddie Hearn. He has some TV dates in the United States, so you can't get exposure here. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's a for for Andy, I hear you, but I say this for Andy, it's a start, right? It's a start. It's a start. You know what I mean? Just being able to start his pro career is a plus for him, right? And um I'm pretty sure they got some. They got some type of plan for him, right? But at some point, I do think it's going it's going to be necessary for him to try to build a profile over here in the states. Like that's that's what they all need to do at some point. So 
again, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just wait a bit to see how it plays out before I say it's a mistake. I want to see how they move them and, and you get what I'm saying. You just want to give it a bit a bit of time to materialize. You get what I'm saying? Because you never know how it could play out. Just like with Regis going to match room, like my initial thoughts was like, damn, is that where the smoke at? But at the same time, like I said, he had he had went into depth. Salute the ringside views, man. He had a um interview with them. He went in depth a little, little bit, about 10 minutes. And, you know, he was talking about it. I think some of the things he touched on in there made a lot of sense. Like, so, again, nothing is one way in boxing. A lot of times when we, we see somebody make a decision that we just didn't see for them, for themselves, like, we can't understand it. But instead of me, like, I'm not trying to I already see people jumping on the train way too early with the Regis duck and smoke and changing his energy this. I think that's premature. I think that's just people looking to put the next the next duck jacket on the next fighter. That's credible. And that's that's what's wrong with boxing. It's people that you can put these duck jackets on that people don't want to put them on, but then they'll force one and try to make Regis out to be some type of guy that ain't been about to smoke since he's been in boxing. So I'm not one of those guys that's jacking that energy. I just want to give it a bit of time to materialize and see what his decision do for him. You get what I'm saying? Mike Kirkland, my bro, how you feeling today? Appreciate you stopping through. Mm, mm hmm. Right, Adolfo. I think so too. I think so too. Salute to Mike Kirkland, my bro Jim, man. David Scott, how you feeling, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. TD was good with it, TD. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I was thinking that too. I was thinking that too, but just give it a second though, uh, uh TD. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the um little interview that he did with Ringside Views. We're gonna chop that up, you know. I'm gonna chop it up like he was doing it with me. You get what I'm saying? So we're going to talk. And I, I I was thinking the same as I think, Tady. Like, damn, you heard me say, like, where is this smoke over there? But I'm like, you fast forward to today. Some of the news that came out is a bit interesting. And I forgot to put that in the title as well, man. Something else that could be the reason that he he went over there as well. So I'm going to play that for you, Tady. We're going to get into it. Eli Harris, salute to you, fan. Appreciate you pulling up. Congratulations, Andy Cruz. Best of luck. That's a fact. What's good with it? Much love and respect, family. How you feeling? Regis has been chasing the bag his whole career. His legacy is going to be lacking, and so is his back. And again, if it don't work out for him, TD, if 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 going with match room don't materialize into the right fights that will amount to the right bags, you get what I'm saying? And then he's going to have some trouble. But I'm gonna play this for him, man, and then we are gonna see y'all gonna. I'm, I'm gonna see what y'all think because y'all know over here, I don't just talk for two three hours. I try to include y'all in every topic that I'm speaking on. So I will. I want to know what the people think as well, man. Well, if he's living here, I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I'm not for sure. I forgot. He's he. I forget. I gotta look. I gotta look. Yo, he's 34. Wish him the best. Now, but you you right, TD. You you get what I'm saying. You on to it though, bro. You on to it. You ain't all base. Jose Diaz was good with the family. How you feeling, brother? Mm hmm. Right. And and even mentioned tank name. Even mentioned tank name. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Even still mentioning tanks. So it's like, man, what you doing? You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I don't Did you see the ringside views one, TD? Because I know I seen the one where he was simply talking about the bag when he was like outside. He was outside talking about like uh what the fans want and stuff like that. This one was a little more recent, I believe. I don't know if you caught it, but I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a uh I'm a play it. He even call Richardson Hitchens, Ryan Garcia coming over KO Laws, right. And again, he's talking about big fight, so it's the bag. I think that's the, when he speak of that fight, it's the bag. 27 years old. Salute to Andy Cruz, man. For real, man. Thrill Hill, what's good with it, family? He lives in America. Salute to Adolfo. Appreciate that. Y'all punch that like button in the moat one time. But we're going to get into this, man. We're going to get into it. Matter of fact, being that we on this now, we're going to get into this now. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up now, y'all. Salute to Ringside Views. You know what I mean? For the dope build with Regis. Let me let me pull this up for y'all, man. Y'all know how your boy keep those clips for y'all. We're gonna talk about it. So I know I seen it on the inside white T was breaking down the contract match room compared to the top ranking. So I think you're right. I think you're right too. I think you might have seen it. So if you've seen it, you might have seen it. So I'm gonna play it just so the fan can see it and we're gonna break it down too. We're gonna break it down, man. We we're gonna get to it. Uh, I don't want to skip nothing. OK. 
Okay, salute to the. Is this the one you talking about, Tay D? Even if we still gonna play it, cause I don't think everybody's seen it. Skills, Mister New Orleans in the flesh, my bro. What's good with it, my bro? How you feeling? Appreciate you stopping through. We're gonna play this just to, you know what I mean? I try to understand. I'm and again, y'all. I just be trying to come from a place of understanding, right? I just want to understand the move rather than just being a guy criticizing and don't really know. I'm trying to make sense out of it. You get what I'm saying? But anything can be said, but I really want to see what he do. And we already know he got a fight lined up with a, with an undefeated guy, this Liam Paro guy that's supposed to be of some substance. So we're going to see. Like, I'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because he ain't never been a sucker, right? And I, then at the same time, I can't necessarily blame him if he's chasing a bag, being that this dude had fights as a professional where he made no money. You get what I'm saying? So, it's, again, I'm just trying to understand. But still, we, if you're not fighting the right fights, we're going to call it out accordingly. But with him, being that he's been a, a fighter through and through and been a solid guy, I'm going to just deal with it as it come. You get what I'm saying? And I'm going to critique as it come. You know what I mean? I know what he's been through finally gains faster super IQ, but thank God – that left uppercut, man. Salute to Andy Cruz. I heard about some of the things that he went through, uh, Jose, to get over here. And like I said, before you probably came in here, I was just, well, no, nah, I think he was in here. I was saluting him because all them things he been through to get here. Sir Ant Bo, what's good with it, my bro? Appreciate you stopping through. How you feeling? Salute to the queen, Miss Joette, putting that color in the chat. Much love and appreciation for the super sticker queen. And we ain't never got a box again. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Still out of the bush. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So we gonna get into this, y'all. We gonna get into this. Mike, what's good with it, fam? How you feeling? Appreciate you stopping through. Salute to everybody. We gonna get into this, man. We gonna definitely get into this. We gonna rock rock this uh interview out. You want to be two time champ, get the belly call now. All poopers, no dog, no champions, right? That's what I was saying too, TD. Like, what's up? Why are you saying these names? You get what I'm saying? What's up with you? you get what I'm saying? But salute to the fam. Oh, we I ain't gonna hold y'all no longer. We're gonna get into this. God, self, what's good with it, fam? We appreciate you stopping through. How you feeling? We're gonna play. Hello, this. I'm in training camp right now. I got some news to tell y'all. I'm not gonna release it right now, just yet, but I am in training camp and um, just expect something next month. Next month. Uh, so talk to me about the rumors. There's been a lot of rumors recently. Uh, top rank offered yeah, you a deal. Yeah, I already know by now. Matchroom yeah. offered you a deal. Are, are you able to say who you leaning towards more a little bit? So nothing is done officially right now, but I'm probably like 98% right sure that I'm going with Matchroom. Um, I just, like I said, they, um, they just presented me with a better deal. And I think I'll just, yeah, just leave it at that. But like, we not signed. Nothing is signed yet, but most likely that's you know that's the way I'm gonna be leaving. This is right before they had um, made that announcement yeah, already, y'all. Yeah, so he knows he was signed. So obviously you've been getting a lot of uh, backlash. People right. have been saying, "Why are you signing the match room when all the good. fighters uh, are at top TV. rank?" Are right, you able right. to elaborate on that a little bit? So all right, <clears throat> this is why for me this was my, this why is match room over top rank, right? So um, they first off top rank offered me. A longer, a longer contract, and Matchroom offered me a shorter contract. Um, I want to start right there. I want to start right there, and the reason I'm gonna stop it right there, just so I could break it down as he go. Right now, look, just to be fair, you heard people say he'd be a fool, he'd be a fool to to like for the way his career has played out thus far, and the moves he's made, the decisions he's made. They said he would be a fool to tie into somebody long term, regardless of who. This is something that was being pushed out there. Why would he go, you know, tie himself into a long time contract? Right. So that's number one. We just going to stop right there. That was a concern of his as well. So he's saying top rank offered him something longer. Match rooms wasn't as long. That's that's number one. We're going to start right there. Because, again, the purpose of this is to understand as best we could based off listening to him why he made the decision he made right that's the best way we could assess it hear exactly what he said and see what we we all get from it we all might get different things from it but that's number one for me i've heard that so many times he'd be a fool to go tie into a contract for years on end you get what i'm saying so that's number one he didn't do that that's number one he went with the situation that was presented to him that wouldn't tie him into there longer than what he was willing to commit to so that's number one 
and on top of that the bag as well so that's two things they ain't tying them in as long and they still offering them more money we're gonna start right there and i'm about to play the rest of this burn that bridge i, I wonder i wonder i wonder too td but we're gonna play it and um and where's the reporter Matias trying to sign with his own right 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 i got that that came after the fact too td so another one so that you know what i mean i try to give him the benefit of the doubt ask these corner what's good with it cuz i appreciate you stopping through but we're gonna keep playing i just wanted to stop it so it all makes sense how i break it down i'm not trying to give them an out i'm again this is coming from a place of me trying to understand why he went with matchroom as opposed to somebody else and the first question like td had was Yo, or the, my my initial thoughts was like, damn, is the smoke over there? Why would you go there? But we gonna we gonna let them gonna let them talk. And so the the fighters at the fighters I want to fight at top rank are Ramirez, Josh Taylor, Tio, right? So if you look at that, Ramirez, from what I understand, Ramirez got one more fight at top rank. So would I be guaranteeing him? I don't know. It, like I I, I re honestly I don't think Ramirez will ever fight me. I really just I, don't think I was that. just gonna say that without interrupting you. I was just gonna say that he had the chance to fight you in 2018. Right. Had the chance to fight you again. Right and, now he and, didn't fight. So and didn't I fight just, you. So it's not even guaranteed that if he was to sign the top rank that Ramirez will fight think, you. Anyways. I don't think Ramirez will ever fight me. So if I go top rank, Ramirez got one fight. He might go match him. Right. If I go match him, Ramirez might stay top rank. So he because like I said, he got one more fight. So Ramirez, this is last fight. T.O., he already said he's not going to ESPN no more. This might be his last fight at top rank. And Josh Taylor might go to 147. So, all right, then who am I left with over at top rank, right? Over. Um just to stop it real quick, because, you know, T.D., I feel you, but just tell me, you, you know, and I deal with logic, right? I deal with logic, right? So what he's saying right here, it, it makes some sense. It makes some sense. Like, it, it, it's this is why decisions like this are tough, because – you just never know. You can't control all the pieces on the board. You can only make the decision for you and just be be hopeful that, you know, the plan that they're going to put in motion is the one that's going to get you exactly what you want. And again, it's hard to please everybody. So no matter what decision I think he makes, it's going to be somebody that's going to complain. You get what I'm saying? Just to be fair. So again, he's making good sense out of this. You just don't know. Josh Taylor could be going to 47. He's already was talking about it. He already was talking about beating up Tiafimo, going up to 47. He said he could beat any of those dudes up there. So you don't know if him going to top rank gets him that rematch. You get what I'm saying? So we're going, you know what I mean? We're gonna let him, we're gonna let him keep talking, man. On on the Metro side, I just feel like Eddie can all those fights I named, Eddie can work with those promoters and he can get them. I just feel he can definitely, he can still make those fights happen. And um like I do, I am fighting. Like I said, I, I you know, I, I'm not gonna right. announce it you. right now, but I, I am fighting you, um, next oh. month against next. somebody. And so already fight. automatically, yeah. and this is even before we even like sign the contract and stuff like that. See, and again, again, y'all, I'm I'm just trying to understand. I don't have all the answers. I'm going off of what he's saying, right? That's another thing that probably led to him making a decision as well. They already, from what he said, all right, top rank offered him something, right? We already know without him mentioning numbers, it was less money, but it was for a longer period of time. Now, you already know Matchroom offered him more money, which this is a guy that's 34 years old that have taken fights and made zero dollars from it. Right. So this is me again, just trying to understand 34 years old. He's already been offered more money for less time. Then on top of that, they already got him a date lined up already. Get what I'm saying? Boom. Like they already, before he even had some sign, they had an opportunity lined up for him already. So I think that's them winning them over. We're going to keep letting them, you know what I mean? We're going to keep getting into this. They already got me a fucking, they already got me a fight date already right now. So I'll be fighting next month against somebody. And then after that, um, fight against somebody else. And then it's it's a three fight deal. And then I think we trying to get like a Matias. You know, Matias has a belt. I do want to, I, I do want that belt from him. Unification, either fight him or maybe like a Ryan Garcia. And Matias, Matias is a person who, um, which I don't know why the public's been saying this, but they're saying that your energy isn't the same towards Matias. Right, 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 right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm letting them, I'm letting people talk, let them talk, but that's the fight that I want. Yeah. So I'm letting people talk, let them build it up, let them talk and stuff like that. But like, that's who I'm going after. You know, I think that from what I understand, they trying to grab him. I don't know if they gonna get him or not, but they trying to grab him. And it's like, all right, people talking. That's the fight I'm going after too. I'm going after him. He got a belt, so I'm going after him too. And um, 
Yeah, bro. That's. I mean, I think that's the plan. And then it's just like, I don't know if I. Nah, I'm not gonna say. I'll say it off camera. <laughs> What's up? Now, now, that's just to be fair. Now, again, I'm not giving him no out. I'm not creating no, you know, no wiggle room for him. I'm just trying to make logical sense out of this. That's another point. The Matias fight is the fight that I think more people want to see him in more so now than ever because Matias has been calling his name for a while when most people wouldn't. Matias then earned the right to fight him now because he is a champion. And Regis Progre has also said he still want to be un become undisputed. You know what I'm saying? So that will move him one step closer to that goal. So that's the fight that makes sense. Now, what I'm saying is he's already hearing the whispers and the rumblings, too, about Matias going over there to match room. So he's very aware of the talking that people are doing. And he you hear what he's saying. He's like, yeah, let him let him talk. <laughs> and I, I could go with this energy because Regis never been no sucker. So it's like he's like, all right, let these dudes talk. I hear that he. He could be coming over this way. I don't know for sure if they're going to snatch him up, but that's another, that's the fight that I want. So the possibility is still there. That's the fight that he want. He kind of, he pretty, he ain't no kind of, he pretty much addressed it right here. He, like, like, listen, he know what people are talking about, but he's very aware that they're in the possibility. It's a big possibility that he end up on match room where he also is with that IBF strap and they could get it on where to make all the sense in the world. So I think it's perfect. You get what I'm saying? It's perfect. I think things could line out. I, and I, again, I, I, as patient as we've been as fans, I know people don't want to hear just be patient, but I think this is a situation for me that I'm allowed to just play out a little bit to see how it, because I, I hear what he's saying and I believe him. I believe him. I don't have a reason not to right now. You get what I'm saying? So, and I know this decision that he made had to be a heavy one. You get what I'm saying? You trying to you know you can't please everybody, but you're trying to make a decision that's best for you, your family, your career, your legacy, all of that. You're trying to, you get what I'm saying? You're trying to do all of that. So I'm pretty sure this decision wasn't the easiest. But like I said, with with the pos with, with him putting things in perspective like this and you just don't know who's going to be there on top rank, you know this is a reason why he potentially didn't go there. The only thing like that people are still asking is what's up with PBC? Why wasn't that an option if it was an option, right? You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean, regarding an advice, <laughs> you see Paris fight with Jarvis, had to get a garage because he stopped Jarvis in the first round. Gage, oh, okay, Matisse, that would be a great fight. Absolutely, absolutely bro. Got to be last. You don't even call your name. How you aim three fights down the line. I get. I, I guess, but I'm, I'm hearing three fight deal. And again, I don't know why it's like that. But I could say he just trying to make a decision that works for him, too. I definitely think he got his career, his future, like his finances in perspective. I think his finance, financial situation definitely played into factor into getting him over there. For sure. For sure. For sure. Fight by nobody. Record say your name. Now you got a three fight plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I I, I, don't, I I mean, I know that's what you getting from. I, I'm not hearing uh, necessarily that he got to be at the end of the three fight plan. I'm just glad that he's in it, period. Like, you get what I'm saying? And, again, I think I think he's trying to stay active, make the money, and get the fights. And I think in doing so, in doing so it's going to have to be a certain way he's going to have to move <clears throat> to get all that, to, you know, to fall, in, fall into place. But I hear you, though. I hear you. But I'm I'm just glad he, sent, he mentioned him. <clears throat> Johnny Q, what's good with him, my bro? Son of God, what's good with it? <clears throat> My bad, y'all. <clears throat> Something out of my throat. Hey, y'all punched that like button one time for me. What's good with the son of God with five star boxing talk? Star salute to my bro. You know, Jack and I'm gonna stop jumping up. Like I well, yeah, got me feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I got you. He, he, but he good though. He gonna, he gonna get to it. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm just coming from a place of trying to understand him, right, y'all? Shade girl, salute to the queen. How you feeling today? Appreciate you stopping through. I mean, the year is like right in his prime, right? And I think, I think this decision is a, is a bit of a it's it's a it's a it's a risk in and of itself, right? Because things truly got to line up for you to get these fights, and you know what I mean. So it's, I, I I think I'm just trying to understand them. I'm not saying right off the bat like I had the same questions: Is the smoke over there in match room? Could he fight somebody over there? Are the champions there? Matias is over this side. Like, get what I'm saying? But again. They saying that there is some it's some plans to get Matias over there on Matchroom and um 
Damn, I could pull this up too while we on it because we're gonna talk about all this, man. <clears throat> we're gonna chop it up because again, he addressed the elephant in the room, which is Matias. And I, I, I for one, like he gonna he gonna say something else in here again, I believe as well, man. He's busy in Matias is the third fight, right? Right, right. You get what I'm saying? Right. And this is a guy that fought for no money before. Core, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? Like one of the first ones, I got to catch it began and never get a chance to hear. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah, we on it. We're gonna cook on this uh Regis right here, man. Getting older every day. That's like boxers, right? Right. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all smash the like button for you, bro. What's up? What's up? I'ma say it off camera. I'ma say it off camera, bro. Okay. I gotta say it off camera. Okay, so how you how you feel about um so yeah, your situation with Probellum, too, Probellum seven, eight, was no, eight, no, no, no longer. No, 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 so you became there. a free agent. Right. Uh, how did, when, when you became a free agent, how did you feel about that, especially just coming off a big win over Cepeda, winning it. the WBC belt? Is I that something it, that you was looking forward yeah, to? Yeah, bro. I, I love it, bro. Like, fuck it. It's just like I'm one of the, um, like the NFL draft or something like yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, people was reaching out. You know, like I said, you know, like, well, the biggest in the world is Metro and, and Top Rank. They were just reaching out. And, you know, I was talking to both of them, bro. And I... You know, for me, I, I ask God every day, like, please guide mm -hmm. me in the right direction. What right. do I need to do? Right. Like, what right. is the right direction? Where do I need right. to go? And um, like I said, bro, I just felt like Matrim is like, for me, like Matrim is just oh, the nah. right place. And so some nah, would watch. say, watch. Uh, you said it's a three fight deal with Matrim. Uh -huh. Some watch. would say, we gonna mention him based again. on your career, hey. how shaky it's been, why right. not so sign with a longer deal like top rank? was giving you just because of the stableness i get that the opponents might not be there right right but uh i guess the longevity why not be with somebody with because they still offer now just to stop him right there again he asking him about people asking why wouldn't he go with top rank that's offering him a longer deal that would lead to longevity even though they might not necessarily have the opponents why the hell would he want to do that why would he want to do that and again, he just told you, see, I told you people hear things differently. He just basically, he just ain't basically, he just told you that they wasn't offering as much money as Matron was, but it was, they was offering them more time to, to lock them in longer, but to pay him less. Why would he want to do that? So again, it's like you asking him that question after he pretty much just told you, he just told you why he's not dealing with them. He, and then you, you longevity is one thing but what good is the longevity if it's not going to come with the bag and the opponents he could potentially get both over there with matchroom this is what he's telling you this is what i hear and again it, it, things have to line up and, and work out for it for it to fall into place right but i understand his train of thought that's all i'm saying like i need i wanted some understanding and i think this is one of the interviews that did it for me you get what i'm saying he it, and again Let's just understand. I know the easy answer or the easy thing to be like, why don't you just go to the PBC? I get it. That's what I was thinking too. But you gotta, I got you just gotta take into account this decision is a lot more difficult than what people might think. And look at what point he's at in his career. He gotta make it count. So, but he wanna be compensated as well because even though legacy is great, legacy don't feed you. Money do. So that's just being I'm dead. That's just, just again, that's. I'm just coming from the train of thought of somebody that's trying to understand this dude. So I think he feel like at least at the bare minimum, he can get some of both. He's Think about it. He don't want to be inactive. He get an activity. They already got him a date before he was signed. They had him. They had him an opportunity lined up. That looks impressive for a guy that wants to stay active. Right. You get what I'm saying? They offer they offer him more money for a less amount of time. That's enticing to this dude. Then he hears, oh, the guy that been talking shit and calling me out and talking crazy on Twitter, he might be coming over here too. Oh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? He might be able to get the bag and, and legacy over there with Matchroom. I'm just saying it's a possibility because I'm not short-sighted. I know it's more than one way to get, get to a, a goal. You get what I'm saying? It's not – PBC ain't the only route. It might seem like it, but I don't think so. So, that's again, that's just me trying to understand this dude and why he made this decision and i, I kind of i hear it i hear what he's saying you get what i'm saying to laurie films my bro what's good with it family how you feeling appreciate you stopping through so again i'm just i'm I'm just this is me trying to understand this guy and i think he being smart i think he being smart yeah yeah i not definitely i won't deny that 100 percent. i think he's trying to get paid because again this is a dude that fought for no money before right so i definitely think he's trying to get paid 100 percent. but again I, it's a report coming out with uh Matias potentially going over there to match room too. You get what I'm saying? Facts, Jose. Facts. Josh, what's good with it, my bro? How you feeling? 
BC, my bro, what's happening with it? Y'all smash that like button, man. BVO Boxing, what's good with it, bro? How you feeling? You good, man? That's what I like to hear, man. I like to hear that, man. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you stopping through. Let me, uh, uh, get, get Brody right real quick. Appreciate you, bro. Y'all smash that like button for me. But again, man, again, and uh, I, I understand that this decision just can't be an easy one, right? And you you got to accept the fact that you just can't please everybody. No matter what you do, it's going to be some people that's going to criticize you anyway. But at least you can tell with this interview that he took his time. He did some thinking. You get what I'm saying? And again, y'all, I'm just trying to understand him. He did some thinking. I knew this probably wasn't the easiest decision. And again, he's old. He, he's he's getting up there, so he, he want to make everything count. So I, I I do hear the intent, and I just this is not a guy that I feel like is gonna do no ducking. You get what I'm saying? I don't I don't see that. Alex, salute Alex. Appreciate you stopping through. You said new to the channel. Appreciate you stopping through, fam. How you feeling? Y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel if you're new. Come rock out with your boy. We are gonna keep playing this, y'all. For you ESPN as the network and that's still a big look right so. well I mean so look at this like what I'll give you what the, the numbers was and stuff like that so in let me see how I could have put this um in four fights they gave me a certain number right and in in three fights like I think with Metro I can make just more Basically, I, I I think I have to tell you more off camera. I can't really put the business out like that. For sure. But yeah, it's just like, his um, money, y'all. It's just honest. like the matchroom. The matchroom deal was just like about like more about about believing in myself. You know, yeah. like if I would if I would have gotten to the, I think if I would have gotten to the like the top rank deal, it was just like I would have been stuck in those minimums, right? So I think right. that. So for me, um, let's just stop it real quick. A dude at his age ain't trying to be locked into a long-term contract at minimums, getting paid minimums. You get what I'm saying? So he do want his money, but I think we as fans, we can't forget that these dudes need to get paid and compensated. A guy that's a two-time world champion should not be set up in a contract where he's getting paid minimums. You get what I'm saying? That's just being fair or realistic to him. I'm not going there either. I don't give a damn if they got all the smoke over there. If I ain't getting paid for it, you get what I'm saying? And again, legacy is great, right? It's great. It's great to speak on that once you retire, but that don't feed your kids. So again, I'm being real. He got a decision to make. It's easy and selfish to say, ah, just go where the smoke at. Nah, he going with that money at as well. Whereas where he's hearing some of this smoke might be coming right to me. So I, I, it's a two for one. You get what I'm saying? Meanwhile, they got me a fight already lined up before I sign. I'm being active. I can get the smoke and the bag. Three birds with one stone. But somebody is going to be left down the cold. Everybody not going to be happy. You get what I'm saying? But it's a decision that he had to make, which is one that the more he speak, I'm trying to, I'm understanding it. Again, I heard an interview years ago where this dude said he had professional fights that he did not get paid a dollar for. Nah, this man won his bread, man. I ain't mad at him. Shit, don't he deserve it? He deserve it. But I think he can do a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of everything over there. I think he can, you know what I mean? Because, again, I'm going to pull his report up in a minute that's saying that his plans for Matchroom to get Matias over there as well. And they know that's a fight that he want right from the rip. You get what I'm saying? So he gonna, I think he's going to mention Matias, if I'm not mistaken, one more time in this too. Man, facts, get that get that money. And top rank, Clinton, they was trying to give him the bare minimum but for a long period of time. That's playing yourself. No, I'm not doing that either. I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. I'm in my 30s, bro. Y'all not about to play me. I'm a two-time world champion. Why are you? How dare you offer me a contract like that and want to pay me the minimum? You bugging. Get bu You bugging. You get paid for it. Yeah, the zone. Oh, yeah, back, you know, some earlier fights. Some earlier fights because, remember, he always, he, he always had, like, issues with promotion. So definitely early in his career. He had some fights early, early in his career. We say he didn't get paid for at all. And I, I never forget that. I, I'm gonna see if I can find it too, man. I'll try to play it on the stream too. Um, yeah, we see like the freedom. Out. Yeah, and I, I love freedom, like, bro. Wait, I like the freedom. And the basically, like when they give you a minimum, that's probably gonna be your maximum, right? And I think that if you, if you, all right, like especially let's, let's, if the opponents on there, if Ramirez right. dips and and To dips and Taylor goes to 47, right? Then you'll be forced to get minimum because there's no marquee fights exactly. for you. Exactly. So. And I mean, I think they probably could do something because I mean, you know, they got Devin coming up, Shakur and stuff like that. Maybe that, but I mean, that's kind of like a stretch and stuff yeah. like that. 
But like I said, let's say like, like so for me and my career, I got the WBC better than 140. 140, if, if, if we be honest, I think 140 is probably the hottest division in boxing right now. For it's sure. so Facts. many big names. Facts. And I got the WBC belt at 140. Facts. So really, bro, like, everybody got to come through me. Like, literally, all the biggest fights, they got to come my way. So we talking about if I... That is something, not for nothing, that is something that people are not considering, too. And I'm just saying, potentially, like, with him having a belt, there should be an interest there for other people to make fights with him, no matter what network he on, right? When no matter what promotional, you know, entity he's with, right? You get what I'm saying? Like I said, man, we just seen Tank and Ryan. Maybe that opens the doors for these other fights to happen anyway, right? So, so where he goes won't impact him as much in terms of what fights he is able to get or not get. With him, as long as he had that title. People should have some type of interest in wanting to fight him, period. The top guys that we would want to see him in there with should have an interest in wanting to fight him. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I said it's like a wait and see with me. I'm going to wait and see how it play out because I do hear what he's saying. It's, it's, it's a lot to wait. It's a lot to try to factor in. And because, again, you're only one piece on the board. You can't control all the pieces. So you just trying to make sure when you do make a move, it – it puts you in a position to get the fights that you want, gets the money that you want, you know what I mean? The respect that you deserve, you know what I mean? It's a combination of things that he's trying to accomplish with this move. And I, the last thing I think when I look at Regis Progre is a guy that's trying to avoid smoke. Like, that's all he's been about. And that's all I could go off until I see him do something different. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, Taylor's a hell of a fighter, man. He's a hell of a fighter. The reason it happened to Tank and Dev don't have fight. Dev leaves top rank. That'd be interesting, man. Absolutely will, Johnny Q. Absolutely. God, so appreciate you, man. Y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel if you're new. We're going to play the rest of this. It ain't that much longer. I do one fight, then two fights. So Paul, so the third fight, you it's up. probably going to be a mega How fight. Feeling, bro? That's what you I know? said, too. And so if I, go, if I get a four-fight deal, the third fight might be a mega fight. The fourth fight for sure is going to be a mega fight. If I was stuck in those minimums, then that's what I'll get for yeah. a mega fight, right? Now yeah. on the other side, I can probably, like I said, I probably can make, I probably can make more in one fight than I can make the whole duration of a contract of a. Now I'm sorry, just to stop it again, real quick, right there. The fact that he's saying this, and he, this is something that he obviously had to sit down and think through. The fact that you know you could potentially make more, more, more money in one fight than you would in the whole duration of a contract despite the names that you're fighting and just imagine just imagine being stuck in minimums but having to fight the killers and not being paid you don't know which one is worse being stuck in minimums and having to fight killers not being paid or be stuck in minimums and they don't even have the killers on the roster to give you you get what i'm saying it's a big gamble it's a big risk so again this is not a guy i think that's making these excuses I think this is a guy that sat down and truly tried to weigh his options. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying what the best move is for him because none of us know. You, you, we can't tell. Just like I can't, just like as much as I would want to just say, oh, this is a good move. I don't know if that's it. that is either because I have to wait to see it play out, right? So you just got to, it's like a wait and see type of thing. But just given the type of fighter he is and his temperament and his belief in himself, I just don't see him trying to avoid quality opposition. So again, that's one of the last things that's coming to my mind when he decided to go over here. You know, some people want to run with the narrative. Ah, oh, he see, he duck and smoke. Uh, man, I'm not doing that to him, bro. Until I see that undeniably, I will call it out. Believe me if I see it. Y'all y'all know it. But as it stands, I think the man is just trying to make a decision that this wasn't the easiest, man. And, and we ain't in his shoes. I be trying to go that deep and put myself in a fighter's shoes. We not in his shoes. So I'm, I could imagine how difficult of a decision it could be. And again, especially... When you're trying to, when you're trying to make a move that's going to impact the chessboard, but you have to keep in mind that you're only one piece on that whole entire board. You get what I'm saying? But you, in being that one piece, you're trying to make moves that affect the rest of the. You get what I'm saying? The rest of the pieces on the chessboard. So again, salute the Regis. I know this de 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 decision couldn't have been easy. And I'm if he got paid, which I'm pretty sure he did. I'm glad he got paid, especially for a dude. That, like I said, was on record for saying he had fights where he didn't get paid. So I think that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Kello, salute to my bro. How you feeling? Dude, this open book, always a straight shooter. That's why I said I don't want to put no jackets on him because I don't think he's a a guy that just say anything. I don't think he just be lying to us. You get what I'm saying? 
You said just do your two-time champion, right? And you want to get treated like it. You get what I'm saying? And already they trying to offer them more time but less money. And you don't even know if the opponents is really going to be there. So it just could be a complete shit show over there. You get what I'm saying? So, get again, I'm glad he got some bread. You know what I mean? He deserve it. Four fight deal. I probably can make more than one fight, bro. So, like I said, it's just That's like crazy. with that, with the match room, it's just like. Right, right, Ash. He with match in myself. You know what I'm saying? I got you. It's like more testing the market out at that point and seeing what the value is for the yeah, said fight exactly. against a marquee fighter. Right, right, right. Because like I said, the first, you know, I think the first two fights is, you know, it's not going to be high marquee names right now. It'll be it'll be people that's respectable, people that's undefeated and stuff like that, you know, probably like top 10 in the rankings and stuff. But then that, that third fight, like I said, if hopefully Eddie, Eddie can get this, um, if they match with we get this done with Matias, the third fight will be Matias, unification. And guess what? After three fights, I'm out the deal, and I got two belts at 140, and that was up. I go, I go. They gotta come. They really gotta come through. Everybody gotta come through me. You know what I'm saying? So I can, I could have locked myself in with a four fight deal Everybody's over there, there, but with this, I can, I can probably grab another. I can fight Matias because Matias sounded like he won't fight me. I won't fight Matias. I can grab another belt, and then after three fights, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a free agent again with another belt, like. It's just like, like I said, bro, the match from there is just like, for me, it's just like believing in myself, which I do 100%. And um, if I, if they can get this Matias thing done, we can get the we can get the Matias fight, the third fight. After that, I'm going to beat Matias. I'll probably knock Matias the fuck out. I'm going to get it. <laughs> get that Matias shit out of here, man. Get it out of here, man. Get it out of here. For everybody that think he won't fight that, not only will he fight him, he will knock him out. Get that out of here. He ain't ducking no smoke. I was just waiting for him to get to that part where he said that. <laughs> I just was waiting for him to get to that part. Get that out of here, man. This dude ain't no duck, man. Let's appreciate the fighter that Regis Progray is and stop trying to put a jacket on him. Get what I'm saying? There's plenty of fighters we can put jackets on that they deserve, even if it ain't just ducking. Get what I'm saying? It's a real fighter right here, man. Get that, get that material shit out of here, bro. Because I'm telling you right now, for me, with my four eyes, what I've seen in Matias and what I've seen in Regis Prograde, that ain't the dude that's going to give Regis his second loss, respectfully. Can he beat Regis on a, on a night? Yeah, if he had, a, you know what I mean, a better night, of course. Because he he, 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 he dangerous. But Regis is more polished, proven. You've seen him do it more times. He's still hungry. He's a two-time champion, and he's still as hungry as he ever been. Ain't no, ain't, Matias ain't getting in there doing to him. What he do to these other fighters? I can guarantee you that. Him being that defensive, irresponsible against Regis, just picture that, y'all. Look how he was just getting touched up in his last fight against Pumps. How he was getting touched up. Imagine Regis touching him like that. The last thing you want to do is be on the other end of Regis where he can hit you with everything. Man, get out of here. That fight is intriguing because it'll be exciting. No doubt. But you can't tell me with the eye, based off what you've seen, that you've seen more more versatility from Matias than you've seen from Regis. Ain't no way you've seen that. Ain't no way. And he's more proven. And he's more proven. You get what I'm saying? He's more proven. He, he lost to the best of the best, the best of the absolute best. They both got one loss. The difference is Josh Teller was looked at as the absolute best of the best. The guy that Matias lost to, y'all never even heard of him. You never heard of him, respectfully. And he's got a, he got a bit better, but this dude is a dog, man. The dog that they see in Matias Regis is that, but but what more? And the difference is, I've said this, because I look at Regis like a fighter, right? He's a fighter. He ain't a pure box. He's a fighter in there, right? He want to fight. But he's a fighter that can box when he need to. The question I still have for Matias, because he's a fighter too. He want to get in there and fight. But are you a fighter? That can box because as it stands, all I do is see him go one way. I see him come forward and I see him like, you know, he make you feel you make make you feel him in there. But Regis can do that and he can box. He's a fighter that can box. Is Matias a fighter that can box? You've seen Regis use head work, head movement. You've seen him use defense with a purpose. Matias defense is get, taking punches. It's different, man. It's different. He got to show me more responsibility on defense for me to feel like he's going to beat Regis because I think he'll be right there to be hit. 
And again, I think that is the biggest factor when it comes to these two dudes. He's far more polished than Matias is right now. He's more proven. And he's a fighter that can box. That stuff that Matias like to do, he been doing it. Getting in there, letting people have it, getting in the inside and working. He can do that. But he also can box. Can you do that? I see Matias fight in all his fights. And the, the his biggest issue is his toughness is always on display, meaning you know how tough he is in every single fight because he's getting touched up in every single fight. Every fight, this guy is getting touched up. I don't know, man. I don't think I don't think he the guy to beat Regis, but I want to see it though. I want to see he got a belt, he earned his right, and I want to see it. And I could be wrong as hell, but I I don't think so. I see it more polished, proven. You know, I call Regis the in, in shape street fighter, bro. You get what I'm saying? Nah, definitely no wash. Facts, Stormy B man, he's a southpaw. Salute to the sensei. How you feeling, OG? Appreciate you stopping through. And I, I just I just know I just know talent when I see it, man. Again, Matias is a dog. But you got to Let's be honest. Some of the first things you describe Matias as is being tough. He's strong. He this. But, you know, Regis is all of that. But got skill with it. You know, he got some skill with it. I ain't saying Matias ain't got no skill. That would be crazy. Right. But you seen a more polished fighter in Regis program, a more proven fighter. You've seen him do it more times, too. You get what I'm saying? At a higher level. And when he lost, you see him lo lose to a much better opponent than what, you know, Matias lost to. You smoke him, please. Don't tell Canelo. I <laughs> kind of. Oh, man. I feel you, Jose. Salute to the Queen, Barbara D. How you feeling today, Queen? Appreciate you stopping through. Much love and appreciation for the support. Salute to you, good brother. Happy belated birthday. Glad to be in the bed. I appreciate you being in the building. Good to see you in here. I hope you're feeling well today, Queen. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Queen, much love and appreciation. The box is mine. What's good with it, bro? How you feeling? I was just about to ask you with more bells. I want forty in the match room or come to the match room. It makes sense now. You get what I'm trying to say? He he he. And again, things still have to play out a certain way for him to for for these things to, to be true, right? But you at least see what his intent is. This was a well thought out, you get what I'm saying, decision. And it's like, you know how boxing is. Anything can happen, but you at least have, you understand he had the intent behind this to, to make it work, not only for himself financially, but with the ideal to get fights as well. You get what I'm saying? So he is essentially trying to still give us legacy while getting paid. And that's something I always felt like he was going to try to do, get paid. I always felt like he was going to try to get his money. Salute to the queen. Appreciate you, queen. Facts, boxing, my So you see it. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you pulling up. He said, Matias Reed is not a joke. Right. Matias and Jug is the most respect because he wants to fight. Comes to fight other fighters at 140. Not calling out Regis. Yeah, I, I, love, I love what uh, Matias is doing because I believe in him. Man, man I, 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 know, I think he do, too. I, do, I think he do, too. I think he do too, man. But this, uh, listen, it's more than one way to, to skin a cat, man. And I think he just chose a way that he felt would work for him, right? But you know, he think this, he feel like this dude is on the back end. You know it, man. And that's 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 all I wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, people want to see you fight Matisse, man. Man, I'm telling you, and can be hurt. Facts, and he's too tough for his own good, and that would backfire in a fight against Regis, in my opinion. King Judah, how you feeling, bro? Appreciate you pulling up. Yeah, I punched that like button for you, bro, man. We're going to keep, we're going to play the rest of this. It's not that long. I won't fight Matias. I can grab another belt. And then after three fights, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a free agent again with another belt. Like, it's just like, like I said, bro, the match room there is just like, for me, it's just like believing in myself, which I do 100%. And um, if I, if they can get this Matias thing done, we can get the, we can get the Matias fight. The third fight. After that, I'm gonna beat Matias. I probably knock Matias the fuck out. <laughs> I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get Matias, and then um, like Great I said, point. I'll have after three fights, I have a belt, and then guess what? By that time, and then it's a short contract. It's probably like, I think we talking about like less than a year, ten months, eleven months, or something like that. Three fights in ten months or eleven months, and so then after that, I'm a I'm a free agent, and so I'm I'll be in the same spot again with. Three more fights under my belt with another with, with another belt. belt too. So and now all due respect, he gotta take care of business for all that stuff that to, to, to fall into place like that, right? But again, why I can give him credit because you can tell with this interview, that's why I like to play these so y'all can hear it too. You can tell 
what he said, what his intent is. You can tell that he really sat down and he thought about this. Yeah, he had his financial, you know what I mean, situation in mind for sure, right? Because he's supposed to, especially at his age, he got to get paid. But at the same time, he really sat down and, and made a decision that he thought could do all of the things that's going to make it good. You get what I'm saying? Give us the fights, get himself paid. But and then the contract is not that long. We talking about uh, damn near less than a year to get these fights under your belt, knocking them out. Like, so just think, even if worse came to worse, right? Worse come to worse, right, y'all? For the people that don't necessarily not don't, don't necessarily agree with decis the decision, worse come to worse with that time frame that he's laid out. A guy that, that ain't been paid before is gonna get paid and then. He could get three more fights, potentially have another belt under his, under his, you know what I mean? With him, like, just think about it. If the worst situation, he don't get the fights he's supposed to. But when that gear is up, then he right back in the situation and he, he free to go figure something else out. You get what I'm saying? I'm just not against that. And I think that's a guy that weighed his options. It kind of makes some sense to me. I mean, it don't kind of, it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. I get it. I get it. A better chance to be Regis or is it a better fight? Hmm. Style wise, you know, because Jack Catterall can come to box, man. Like, I feel like Matias is just gonna be there to be hit, and I feel like from a physical standpoint, right? From a physical standpoint, the Matias fight could be tougher, right, Ash? But then from a also from a technical standpoint, I feel like, you know, what I mean, the Catterall fight could be, you know, what I mean, challenging for him. You get what I'm saying? But physically, I think the Matias fight would be tougher. You get what I'm saying? They both could be. Tough fights for different reasons. And I don't know which one to say would be tougher. I could the best way I could phrase it is say physically, I feel like a Matias fight is more physically demanding of Regis. So that'd be more physically taxing. But I think Jack Catterall could probably push him from a, you know, an IQ a boxing ability standpoint. You know what I'm saying? And make him, you know what I mean? Make him make him box. But they both, both, both good fights to me. Agus Chavez was good with it. Jersey in the building. What's good with it, my bro? That's what I say, man. That's what I say. How could you not like him, Mike? Yeah, me too. And again, that's why I play this because it's about understanding. And I just, that's what I try to do. And I try to, you know, create a situation where y'all can understand where you're coming from, man. You get what I'm saying? Sound like he 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 good with it, it but it sounds well thought out too. It don't, it don't sound selfish. It don't sound like he just chased the bag. You get what I'm saying? It, it don't sound like he just chased the bag, but you definitely understand that he had his, his financial situation in mind. And as he should, because again, as fans, you know, legacy is for us for to sit there and talk about and for them for bragging rights when they retire. But we all know that legacy don't don't get you, you know, don't pay, don't you can't you can't eat legacy, you know what I'm saying? So I'm with it. All right, Julio Julio Cruz has been clear. Let's see what he does. I'm 135. I gotta look him up, Jose. I gotta look him up. Be more entertaining. Me too. Me too, though. hundred percent ash more entertaining fight. And I think that people will want to see that fight more as well than, than the Catterall fight. Salute to everybody in the building. Let me play the rest of this. It's almost over. Like I said, I, I just think that's why, if people don't know, that's why I'm choosing Matchroom. Is um, Rugaboo Promotions or anything of that sort, is that in your future? Are you looking to yes. become a promoter? So that's another thing. Um, with Matchroom, bro, Eddie just, like, they just giving me so much. Like, literally, like, I'm going to have the ability to put whoever I want on my, on my undercards. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I didn't, I'm not going to announce it yet. I'm going to tell you off camera. But, you know, we got something. We got something next month already. You know? We got something next month in New Orleans already. Just to let y'all know. I'm not going to tell y'all where I said. I'm not going to tell y'all who it is. But, yeah, we got something already in the, in the lineup already for next month. And with this... I'm, Eddie's gonna allow me to do rural promotion. He's gonna work with me. We're, we're not like, I'm not gonna right, be no, an employee. Like if I would, if I would have went to like, you know, top rank, I would have been working with them. Like we're partners. Me and Eddie's gonna be partners. Yeah. I can put all these dudes I know, all these people I train with, bro. I'm gonna be able to put them with me on my undercard, and that's the, that's what you want. You that's the power. It. Another thing, y'all. You hear hear another thing again. The, the whole point of me talking about this and playing this for y'all was for us as a as a community, as family, to try to get an understanding of a fighter that we support. You know, unanimously, I think people rock with region. This is the whole point of just trying to create a, 
a situation or a conversation where we could create some understanding as to why he did what he did. But then again, listen, he he, he would have been an employee like he would have been working for them is what he meant to say. He's working with Eddie, their partners. You get what I'm saying? And Eddie is allowing him to pick who he's putting on the undercard. You talk about lifting somebody else up. So just imagine if you, you feel like Regis is a solid dude, right? Just think it, it, it's it's not just about him. This this decision actually could benefit other people. The fact that he decided to include that in there tells you exactly that, that he didn't just have himself in mind. He could have kept this piece of information to himself. But the fact that he decided to share with us that Eddie is going to allow him to decide who's on the undercard and things like that, I think that's dope. That's Eddie won him over. That's what it sounds like. Sound like Eddie won him over. And as long as he stand firm on everything that he was promised, I don't see an issue. I don't see an issue, right? You know what I'm saying? I think this might work out for him. This might really work out for him. Right. You get what I'm saying? Facts shower. The facts. Facts queen. <clears throat> facts. It's so hard to make a fight these days. Boxing the business is not a sport anymore. Nah, but he, yeah, he, he always brought the fights. Facts, man. Y'all punch that like button for your bro, man. Oh, why he has the ability to make the undercard. You get what I'm saying? That's why I wanted to play this because I, I figured everybody didn't catch this. And again, we just talking about the we are we trying to understand the why, right? That's how we got here. We're just trying to understand the why. And I felt like this was fitting to talk about because we you know we talk about everything, right? But uh, again, this was news. This was something worth talking about. He was a, a new signee. People was waiting to see what he was going to do. We heard match room before he actually confirmed it. But now we we, we got it. I think we all have a slightly better understanding for his why. You get what I'm saying? And you can honestly say it wasn't just financially motivated. You get what I'm saying? The fact that he he's thinking about who he can put on his undercard, that means directly you're giving another person an opportunity. You get what I'm saying? That they otherwise wouldn't have probably have gotten if it wasn't for you going there. So Again, it's like it's about the sport. And I think that uh, I, I respect fighters that make decisions that affect more than just them in a positive way, more than just him in a financial way. He's he put in a situation where other people could benefit directly from it. You get what I'm saying? That's why I rock with me, bro. So I'm quick to judge a duck move is so important. It breaks you down to inform an opinion. And that's all I try to do. Yeah, I just create some perspective, man. Salute to my bro. You get me. Judah Ben, my bro. What's good with it? How you feeling, Brody? Appreciate you stopping through. He's so damn nice and giving though, right? Eddie is snake intended. That is that's that's my only uh resistance toward it, how he's been in the past. But um, Ash, I've heard depending on I think who he I think he got favorites, Ash. I think it's one of them situations where he got favorites and he got people that he kind of particularly favor. If Regis is one of those guys, then Regis should be okay. You know what I'm saying? Gave him an offer he couldn't refuse. You get what I'm saying, Ash? You get what I'm saying? Gave him some financial security. Gave him activity, gave him a shorter term deal with, you know what I mean, with more money, with the with the possibility of bringing over one of the biggest fights for yourself. You get what I'm saying? It's just like it's it's man, Eddie, Eddie pulled out all the stops, man. Right, right. Eddie Eddie trying to pull out. He done got Andy Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Eddie tends to put his foot in his mouth. All facts, Queen. All facts. All facts. All facts. When we and that's why I say with Eddie, you just got to deal with him like a fight by fight basis, right? A fighter by fighter basis, should I say? Depending on, we got to see how much he like Regis, and we gonna know. And I, I would say this: this is a good sign, and I think he really liked Regis because it seemed like he rolled out the red carpet for him. And mind y'all, he had a situation lined up for Regis before Regis even signed. So I think he liked Regis. I think he, I think he might like Regis, so that might be the region reason he doing good you get what i'm saying we just giving everybody else opportunities great point you get what i'm saying so again that's why i brought this to y'all i don't know if y'all any of y'all caught this interview before today hopefully this was new for y'all and y'all ain't have to sit through something y'all seen already a million times but again man i just like i like listening to the fighters i like when they do these interviews because we able to get some some straightening man some clarity you get what i'm saying i definitely feel like i got some with this with this interview with this chop over regions i definitely feel like i understand his reasoning and his why you get what i'm saying and it's just something i can level with you get what i'm saying it's nothing that he said in this situation right in this interview make me feel like ah oh, that's a dude trying to duck smoke you know a duck when you hear one and he spoke very clearly straightforward and honestly and openly about things so 
You know what I mean? Eddie working smarter, not harder. You dig what I'm saying? And still TV. How you feeling, my bro? Appreciate you pulling up. We know he favored the hell out of Clinello. Facts, Queen. He did. That was one of his favorites. You won't, you won't be able to, like, put the, the guys you train with. Because, you know, I know how it is in boxing. I came up the same way, bro. Like, we train and train and train. We ain't, like, for what? You know, we ain't got no fight date and stuff like that. So now I'm going to have the power to, like, all right, I can put all these people on my undercard. I mean, maybe, obviously, I know a lot of fighters, so I'm not going to put everybody on my undercard. But I can choose, you know, at least I can, I can have the power to choose certain people. I won't put them on my undercard. It's going to be on a big platform. Um, and that's gonna get it's gonna get my people paid, and you know, like I said, that's another reason why you know I'm, you know, most likely going to match room. See what I'm saying? So again, man, for me, you know, I always try to add perspective. I don't. I'm, my aim is never to change somebody's mind. It's just to open their mind and, and add something to think about. And I think hearing this interview right here just just. Now it just gave me some clarity. Stuff makes sense to me. This was well thought out. This was a well thought out decision. Everybody gonna say, and it's crazy. It's crazy, y'all. Just think about something. We had a place sometimes in boxing where people make it seem like it's something wrong with somebody going to get paid. In any any other sport, we cheer when people go get paid. In this sport, we condemn a person for going to get their money. In a sport that you cannot play. That's the hurt business. We condemn them. Knowing, like I said, legacy is great, man. It, and it's some that really live by that and, and choose legacy over the bag. But let's be honest, man. Prize fighters, they there to get paid, bro. And, and I ain't saying just be all about that, right? Because obviously, I think he just created a scenario where he wasn't just about the bag. He wasn't just about the bag. You get what I'm saying? He was trying to do a number of things with one decision and help people, bro. Help other people in a sport where people are starving for opportunities. There's no telling who he might get an opportunity now. That is dope. That's doper than him going to match room to get him fights. You get what I'm saying? That's the most. Look, man, I don't know. I see a selfless act, man. I see that's different, man. I just get different stuff out of this. Like some people going to look at him like, ah, oh, he just duck and smoke. Or he just trying to get paid for me. I don't think he ducking no smoke. I think he is trying to get paid, but I think he's trying to get other people paid. And I think he's trying to fight the fights. I do. This is the hurt business. What you mean don't get paid? I don't give a damn what you say. Half the people that be complaining they ain't even real fans of his. They probably want to see him get beat up. You get what I'm saying? That dude, like, yo, look, if I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna fight. Look, they gonna they gotta pay me. I'm a two-time champion, bro. I gotta get paid like one. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Meanwhile, addressing the elephant in the room, that is Matias. What people think he's scared of this dude. Yeah, ain't nothing about Regis that make me think he's scared of nothing to nobody in boxing, bro. He different, man. And I, I just, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to wait to see how this situation materialize and how it play out. Right now, I, I feel like I got an understanding as to why he did what he did. You get what I'm saying? Facts, Mike. Easy to root for. Very easy to root for, bro. Very easy. And he probably was saying Oscar the death. Threat. <laughs> they said it was B hop. <laughs> God said they said it was B hops. You feel me? You feel me? Dangerous sport. Also, it's the hurt business. You can't play it. You can't play it. Expect this guy could be friends with. I think this cleared up a lot about his decision. You get what I'm saying, Mike? Salute to my bro, Mike. Always putting that color in the chat, man. Much love and appreciation, man. And Support we ain't never gonna box again. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for you to get your just do. Salute to my bro, Mike, man. Appreciate you. But yeah, man, it, it, again, and that's that's where I always come from, man. That's how that's that's how I get here. That's how I'm here. I just wanted to understand. I think playing this for all of us to hear, we could all do that together, like get a better understanding that you because you you can't unless you you already had your mind made up before this was played you can't tell me that he ain't at least explain a scenario where you could say you understand why he did what he did and you can't just make it about one thing you can't just do that you can't say it was about ducking you can't say it was just about money you can't say it was selfish you get what i'm saying you can't say it was a stupid move right now the same way i can't just triple down and be like, ah, oh, this is the greatest move. I don't know. It still has to play out, but I, I understand the thought process. And I, I, I'm still aware that 
regardless of how he got it in his head, things still have to materialize and play out a certain way for them to be true. You get what I'm saying? For for the reality to take place. So uh, I'm it's just like a wait and see thing, man. It's a wait and see. Was Regis a first topic? I was a little yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Regis and uh, but really, um, Ash, I was gonna get into uh, Andy Cruz a little bit more, but I end up staring over to the other side of it, which was Regis. You know what I'm saying? But for the y'all that don't know, you know, Regis, both him and Andy Cruz are now with Matchroom, and you know, I was talking to y'all about um how Eddie Hearn is already he big, he real big on this Andy Cruz guy, real big on Andy Cruz, man. So again. Just to um salute to my bro Mike, just to uh kind of finish up with this side of things. I think I think we um we got a good understanding of what Regis is on, right? Get what I'm saying? And I, that's all this was about, just letting y'all uh hear it for y'all self. And I think, like I said, I think you could say after this situation that you know Regis wasn't ducking nobody, man. So again, he mentioned Matias. And um, real quick before I uh, switch into the next, before I get back onto Eddie Hearn and, and Andy Cruz, let me go find this article real quick for y'all. Yeah, give me two seconds. Oh, I got y'all. Let me just pull this up. There we go. Pull this up. Mike, salute to my other my other bro, Mike, in that cash app, man. Much love, much appreciation supporting this grind, bro. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Much appreciation to y'all bros, man. Appreciate y'all. Boxing 101, salute my brody. How you feeling? Also, Andy Cruz made it to the stage. Yeah, he's, he, yeah, I'm hearing he in the States now too, Ash, as well. So, Cruz is really good, everybody. What? what? I'm in the ring. The ring don't lie. I'm from Cuba, but you got to show me how good you are. Tank is on fire. Right, right, right. Tank is on fire. Right. And I'm going to get to him in a second. But again, just to wrap up this portion of you know, Matisse in the matchroom situation. I mean, uh, Regis in his matchroom situation, as well as the article, y'all, that's out with Boxing News 24. Y'all free to go check that out if y'all haven't about, um, you know, Matisse could sign with matchroom to fight Re Regis Progre in a unification at 140. And again, reason why I think I'm feeling good that this fight could happen because we know Matisse won it. And with him wanting it and this being a possibility, if that's all he got to do to get a fight with Regis, you don't think he's going to do it? Get what I'm saying? Him as a fighter. Just think about his temperament. You think he's going to cry and be like, ah, oh, no, I'm staying where I'm at. He's going to go where that smoke is at. You get what I'm saying? So I think I think we get that fight that we want. I think we get a Regis and Matias fight. And everybody that been clamoring for the fight could finally see what they need to see. But as it states with Boxing News 24, plans for him to go on over there with matchroom and they already got the potential unification in mind between him and regis already so that's that's a good sign to me that's a good sign that a fight more than likely will happen between these dudes so yeah man and again as long as that as long as this fight happened i'm cool and i think it will you get what i'm saying and it's funny because this this article also just talking about the video i just played for y'all salute to ringside views as well man dope work with regis man dope interview so again one one of another one one other reason that led to regis going that way over there with matchroom he already got the whispers that matias might be coming on over there so that he got the money they didn't tie him in that long if worse come to worse, you got to think top rank could have potentially, like he said, not even had the opponents, right? He would have went over there with them, signed with them. Then they don't have the opponents, but they got him tied into a longer deal with less money and he got to deal with it. And y'all talk about time wasted at what, 33, 34? You talking about time wasted? But think about it. Long, long term is not really what he's concerned with. He's concerned with things that he can see in front of him, which is 
you know, you could plan the the the, the next year or so of your life to, to, to a certain degree, but years, like you just don't know, it'll be too many moving pieces in boxing. So I can understand his, his reasoning and his willingness to bet on what he can get done in about 11 months to a year, as opposed to multiple years with less money. You get what I'm saying? It seemed like it. The more the more you think about everything he was saying, the more you understand exactly why he did what he did. It was almost like a no brainer. But the only thing, if I had anything that like not so much critique, but the only thing I could say that was possibly missing was, uh, you know, why, why or why not was or was wasn't, you know, PBC an option. You get what I'm saying? That is the only thing I would want him to touch on that he probably did. And if I was interviewing him, I would have definitely asked. I would have wanted to know what was up with, uh, you know what I'm saying? King Kong is helping all of them. Salute to Luis Ortiz. Salute to Cuban, man. Salute to King Kong Ortiz. I had to tell him Ortiz and Regis. Maybe it's undisputed or get the most of the titles. Who got Anton Seinberg? Do Eddie have all the top fighters at 140? Nah, he got a couple. He don't got all of them. He got a couple, though. He don't got them all, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't think nobody got them all because a- Antoine is over there with uh, what PBC. You know what I'm saying? So uh, does he speak English? Oh, you talking? That was that. Do you think they're gonna move Andy Cruz like they moved Morrell? Um, after this, I'm glad you said that. So I just wanted to wrap up that part, y'all. Yeah, I punched that like button for you, bro. Sub to the channel if you knew. We gonna keep cooking for a little bit, man. Um, I'm going to pull up this small clip from Eddie Hearn, man. So it's it's cool. It's funny that you just asked about that. Uh, bro, do I think they're going to move him like that? And when 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 you got Eddie Hearn, the guy that that's going to be promoting you talking like this, I think it's a possibility. I'll say that. I can't say I know for sure, but I'll say I think it's a definite possibility. Definite. Uh, give me a second. I'm just going to pull this up. Did he say PBC wanted to fight once a year? And he said he didn't want to wait that long in between fights. I didn't hear him address that in this. That's the only thing I did. But did he say that? I could be wrong. Don't quote me, fam. No, nah, no, nah, it's a possibility. He just didn't say it in this clip that I played. Like damn coming. Yeah, you get what I'm saying, Mike? So again, uh, it, it was a difficult decision that I can level with. I can understand the, the thinking that went into this. You get what I'm saying? So Eddie, yeah, so Eddie signed Andy Cruz and Regis. Um, cuz oh, yeah, might have burned that PVC bridge. He said some disrespect about Al. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I I, I I that's the only thing I didn't hear him speak on. Speak English, not a lick, that's a lick of English. So he speak highly of Cruz, Bob, or Eddie. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, um. Eddie Ash and he's with Eddie. Eddie just signed him too. So Eddie just signed him. So he already talking crazy, Ash. He talking extra confident, should I say? I ain't gonna say he's talking crazy, but he's talking super confident, man. Super confident. But let me play this little clip for y'all. I mean, this kid, listen, this is one of the greatest signings I've ever made. I said to him tonight, I believe in over 30 years of watching boxing, you are the best talent I've ever seen. From, you know, from the amateurs coming into the pro ranks. He's going to start with 10 rounds in July. And, I, and I'll say it now. And, you know, you heard me ranting and raving about Shakur Stevenson, who I think he's unbelievable. I would back Andy Cruz against any lightweight in the world now. Right? This kid is unbelievable. And I am so blessed to secure his signature. Like, it's a major, major coup. So, huge for us tonight. Regis Progray and um, Andy Cruz. And... Uh, you say any more, there are more. There are other world champions that we're talking to, and um, we'll see where we get with them. I mean, and y'all heard it. It was a short clip. I heard it right out of his mouth, man. Listen, he said he picking Andy Cruz to beat any lightweight in the world right now already. He touting him as the best lightweight already in the world without even having one fight. So, again, that's the promotional hat on. But... On the other flip side of that, I do think he believes exactly what he just said. I do believe he believes this. I think he being honest as he can be in this moment. Like, you know, Andy Cruz simply was looked at and is looked at as one of the best amateur fighters ever. Ever. You get what I'm saying? Definitely one of the most successful. So 
Um, I, I, I know this, I, this is how Eddie feel, and I ain't mad at him for feeling that way. You get what I'm saying? Look, rock with who you rock with. You get what I'm saying? I can't wait to see what Andy Cruz do as a, a professional as well. I, I was able to see some of the things he was doing as a, um, you know, an amateur. So he, he seemed to be very skilled. He seemed to be the goods. Let's see how it transitioned over into the pro ranks. You know what I'm saying? He was signed. Oh, actually, money talks. Maybe up. Money talks. Bob Eddie, this should be good. Bob loves him some Keyshawn, right? Right. And he, uh, oh, he has some. Um, what he did I did I upload what he said to Keyshawn in here? Hold on, I think I gotta put it in here. He he he. Oh, he been he he was talking. He has some words for for Tank Tank and Keyshawn. Let me find it. Uh, I think these are it right here. I was like, oh, he talking spicy. I like bro, he talking slick. Okay. I like Andy Cruz. He talking, he talking that talk already. Andy Cruz live up to the hype and skills and forget Keyshawn. Want to see Shakur versus Cruz for sure. Yeah. Me too. You gonna start at 10 rounds. So yeah, you see what I'm saying? Already from the rip, Ash. So again, I think it was fate when you asked, do I think they're gonna move him like Morel? Yeah, I think it's a good possibility. Absolutely, Mike. He could sell it. Skywalker box and salute to my bro. How you feeling, man? Don't work too hard over there. Don't work too hard over there, Brody. Or weight class. He's saying lightweight. He's saying 35, 135. Yeah. He's saying the best lightweight already. So yeah, he's saying 30. He's saying 35. Eddie just said 35 anyway. So um let me show, let me let me um pull this down for a quick second. And let me see something. Yeah, give me two seconds. Andy Crizzles. Andy Cricket, y'all punch that like button for you, bro. <laughs> Look at Rudolph. That's Rudolph right there. I ain't even mean to put that up there. My bad. I ain't even know I had Ru Rudolph. Damn, Rudolph up there. Canelo fans still mad at that boy. Hold on, take that ain't the right one. This is the one. That is the one right there. This Andy Cruz right here, man. Let me take this uh banner off the bottom real quick. That's Andy Cruz talking to Keyshawn Davis on Twitter a little while back. <laughs> so they already keeping this live and in everybody mind that for people to want to see this fight man he said why is Keyshawn Davis such a biatch he said do you have my name in your mouth again I'm sick of beating you but if I get one more chance then it's over for you man straight to Keyshawn Davis man straight to Keyshawn Davis man <laughs> He talking to Keyshawn, man. So look, I, I look, I love to see the rivalry continue as professionals. I want to see how we, how he gonna transition from from an amateur to the pros. I want to see that Andy Cruz is a good fighter. So I just want to see. I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? I want to see it. Definitely want to see it. You know what I mean, since some house from some years ago, IG Andy Nice, okay, seen Olympic fight. Yeah, he can fight. Can a pinch away from a broken nose? His damn self. Hell yeah, he was Ash. Out there looking like Ru Ru Rudolph, Rudolph, Rudolfo, <laughs> Rudolfo. Out there, that's confidence here in the United States. Absolutely, and he's very. I, I like his confidence, yo. Yeah, yeah, he got to. So far, so good. He backs it up. I like him, yo. Like him. You have to fight. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's see what he do when he over there. Andy got a ton of skill, man. Ton of skill. He's, I only seen one Andy Cruz on Shakur level. Uh. I could say this, right? Schizo Paul, he definitely like the amateur ranks. He had that, he had the amateur system, like, you know what I mean? Down pat. He looked like he's very, very talented, he like a very talented dude. Now I could see right off the bat, I could see people probably saying something about his style, but he come to fight. And the dude tricky, he could be elusive. He had fun in there. He got a ton of confidence. And he looked like he got some pop. He like he got a little bit of pop, man. As an amateur. You know what I mean? I was seeing he put, you know what I mean? Put 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 some hands on some people. So 
the right to have to beat him four times. Right. Right. Defense wise, he pretty slick. He's slick in there, Skizzle Paul. He's slick. He don't get hit a ton from what I've seen. You get what I'm saying? He don't get hit a ton. They don't get hit a lot. From what I've seen so far, 817, what's good, family? How you feeling, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. Keep showing muted after you got called out. Um, He still be mentioning little stuff here and there. Like, um, what did he say? He said something, something. But Andy Cruz just been making fun of him. Like, and making, you know what I mean? Making light of the situation. Andy Cruz dancing after he beat him in anything, bro. For, for the fight. When you think he should, should push for the fight, I don't know. Oh, you talking about for um? Oh, for for a rematch with Andy Cruz? Sheesh. I say whenever, whenever it makes sense, Ash. The sooner the better, right? Because it looked like look, again, and that's a good question because it, it seemed like he's gonna be on the fast track. You get what I'm saying? They think very, very highly. You heard what Eddie just said. Eddie, man, Eddie just gave this man unbelievable praise, like. I believe in over 30. Oh, yeah, my bad. Hold on, let me take this off real quick. Yeah, this was unbelievable praise. Listen, right here. this is one of the greatest signings I've ever made. I said to him tonight, I believe in over 30 years of watching boxing, you are the best talent I've ever seen from you know from the amateurs coming into the pro ranks. He's gonna start look, he's saying he the best talent he ever seen, ever. Of watching boxing, you are the best talent I've ever seen. From you know, from the amateurs coming into the pro ranks, he's going to start with ten rounds in July, and I, and I'll say it now. And you know, you heard me raving and raving about Shakur Stevenson, who I think he's unbelievable. I would back Andy Cruz against any lightweight in the world now. Right, this kid is unbelievable, and I am so blessed to secure his signature. Like it's a major, major coup. So huge for us tonight. Regis Progray, Me and, um, Andy Cruz, and uh, you say any more, there are more. There are other world champions that we're talking to, Bad and um, we'll see where we get with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to see God? He's been talking, he's been doing, um, Keyshawn Davis been doing uh, little lives and stuff more. He's been talking, he's been, he been being even more talkative. I mean, Andy Cruz to be a good counter puncher, right? Right. I want to see how he really transitioned as a pro. That's my biggest question. That's my only question for him. Because if he he be anywhere as good as a as a pro as he was as an amateur, he's going to be a problem, bro. Wonder what he told Regis. <laughs> it's like he rolled the red carpet out for him, bro. They arrested as They did? <laughs> Why? What'd he do? And he like 19 or something, the young dude. I haven't seen Cruz. Is he more talented than Robisi? It's funny, Mike. It's funny you said that, right? Because look, I'm about to show y'all something else I got in here. Another graphic. Hold on, let me find it. Make sure I still got the picture in here. Okay, here we go. There we go. Hold on. I gotta give me a couple seconds. Sorry. I'm gonna pull something else up for y'all for a second. Y'all punch that like button for me, man. <laughs> yeah, he talked crazy. He talked crazy to Tank too. He said something crazy to Tank too. He's talking spicy. I told y'all Andy was on one. Andy was on one, bro. Andy was on one, y'all. That's how he was going crazy in the streets, was he? Young Hasbula. 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 Oh, yeah, but just a real quick. Hold on. That's what he said. This is what he said to Tank Ash. <laughs> he said, don't disrespect the legends, brother. You are an average fighter. He told Tank he's an average fighter. You know, Tank ignored his ass, though, but uh, that's what he said. He told Tank he average. Yeah, man, what was Hasbula, Hasbula out here? Has Hasbula, what was he doing out here? What a different weight. Uh, oh, who you talking about, Robisi? Oh, I'm going to get back to that, Mike. I ain't forget about you. 
Eddie will sell an Eskimo in a blizzard and swear and keep him warm. <laughs> Fizzle, salute, appreciate you stopping through, bro. I got I got that feel. Oh, yeah, you do? He can play this very well. Yeah, if they smart, right. I think that I think he's gonna try to rock off this, man. But yeah, he told Tank he average right here, man. But um, uh, let me pull something else up, man, because Mike asked something about Robisi. Boom. Ro um, let me move this off. This was some of his wins in the amateurs, y'all. This was his top wins. Look who up there in this graphic. Could y'all see this picture? Oh, two by ten. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. You're gonna have to bring something. That's why I said I want to see how he transitioned as a professional. I think he I think he got all the potential and talent in the world. I just want to see how he looked in his first fight or first few fights, should I say. He beat Keyshawn. Uh, let me see the names. Hold on, y'all. I'm going to get y'all the names, the guys that he beat, because I don't know all these dudes in here. I know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, Mike, back to your question. He beat Robisi in the amateurs. That's the crazy part. He beat Robisi. He beat Keyshawn. He beat Sean McComb, Luke McCormick. What's his name? Yeah, McCormick and uh, what's his name? Ho Hovhanis Bakov. I'm I'm assuming that's him. So he beat Robisi. His the biggest amateur wins, I think, is Robisi and um Keyshawn Davis. Them his biggest amateur wins. So yeah, facts though, because he not he could. And recruit the only way to know the truth. Ah, uh -huh. throw him in there. Throw him in there. Legendary duck. Legendary cheat. Legendary waste of time. Send him my Alvarez. Put it on his box of tubes, though. Talk to him. Right. This the dude that beat Keyshawn. And he beat, uh, like I said, Robisi and three other notable guys, too. So Keyshawn and Lucy Obama. Nah, and, and look, if we being honest, we being honest, like, because some people got different interpretations to that. A win is a win, right? He got his wins. But it wasn't like he was in there watching Keyshawn. This is the Olympics, yo. The point system. I'm not knocking it, but I really want to see him as a pro because he got a ton of talent as an amateur, bro. A pro, he could be a problem, man. So, yeah, nah, Keyshawn ain't lose to no bum. Not at all. Have to show me the pros right. Tank be lubing in the Ami. So that's, and that's crazy in, in and of itself, man. BCB Shakur and the amateurs. I ain't never going to forget that. I, he beat my boy for the medal. You got you got to know that if you're Shakur, you got to know that if you rock with Shakur, which I do. So I ain't going to forget. But I think we all, <laughs> I, <laughs> man, I, listen, he, he won in that point system again, man. I think Shakur is just totally different. That would be totally, that would be a totally different fight right now. Swear would. Or you just tell he carries himself. Yeah, he don't care. Andy Cruz don't care. I like him. He, he do not care. He don't. One battle rap bad boy, you ducking the Cuban links. <laughs> he been talking. He, he 27, Schizo Paul. We will see what Andy gonna do in the pros. is different, right? That's why I say is it, the big part is to see to to see how he how he materialized, like how he transitioned, how he make the transition over to a pro. You know what I mean? BCB Shakur, the amateurs B Shakur. Yeah, he beat him for the he the one that he the reason my boy got a silver medal instead of a gold. We, we you gotta know that i mean we i think we all know that in here but uh i definitely wouldn't pick him to beat him as no uh professional i think shakur definitely is a better professional than robisi and i like robisi but what i'm saying from my eyes i see more talent with shakur i see he transitioned to a better pro than me stay look more skillful it's no disrespect to robisi i like him but i think shakur is uh more skillful than him as a professional robisi he said it. He he did have plans for a while, Ash. He said he was going to wait till he got up to where he was at. But he, then when you see the way it play out, and the reason why I like Robisi, because he beat Shakur, right? That was a fair fight. I seen it, and I respect him. You know, he, he did his thing, right? He didn't try to build his career off that. You get what I'm saying? He's like, he, he got to a point where he got tired of like acknowledging that. That's when he kind of won me over, when he didn't want to keep talking about that. He like, look. I got a win like this. I need those type of wins, but as a professional, that's why I like Robisi. I was like, yo, he a real fighter, yo. I like him. He, but he beat my boy fair and square, though. He did. He is. Yeah, he is. He is. Robisi still some small as hell, too. So the size difference will always be, you know what I mean, a factor. But I like Robisi. He ain't no slouch. That's somebody I like to watch fight. Anytime he fight, I like to watch him, yo. Robisi, 
I like it. Me too, Andy. <laughs> you know he coming. You know he coming. Uh, uh, eight eight one seven. You know, you know he coming. You know, you know he coming. You know he coming. He definitely coming. But I think Keyshawn will welcome the challenge. It's getting less likely to happen. It is. They both said it. They both said it, and I respect it. Robisi was like, by the time he move up, Shakur will probably move up even an extra weight class, and that's realistic because he said. He's comfortable at the weight class he at, and he'd be there for a while. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did Nova. Yeah, he did Nova bad. He sparked his ass, man. That's why you know he's a special talent, man. Mm -hmm. Robisi, one of them guys. He got my respect for sure. 100%. He got my respect. I like him. Not even because he beat Shakur, because he was able to transition as a good pro as well. You know what I'm saying? He took a loss in his first fight. He got, got knocked down, lost. And he been winning ever since. He rematched dude, beat the hell out of him. Like I like Robis. I like him. But he 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 sparked <clears throat> he sparked Abraham Nova, man. He sparked him pretty damn. <clears throat> Excuse me, I sparked him pretty damn bad. But yeah, man. So <clears throat> we got match room. We got these the two signees, man. You got Andy Cruz, and you got uh, Regis Program. I think we all got to, like I said, a better understanding as, as to why Regis went where he went, right? And we just going to have to wait and see how it all play out for him. You get what I'm saying? We're going to have to see, like, you know what I mean? What it do for him from this point on. Plant versus Billy Joe. <laughs> Billy Joe and us is he turning this year. He's sure going to block me. <laughs> Who you going to go mess with him on Twitter? I mean, dudes got to stop being so sensitive. This is fun, man. Twitter is fun. Like, I like to see people going crazy on Twitter. It'd be funny. I'd just be in the shadows watching. You know what I mean? I'd be in the shadows watching all of it unfold while people going nuts. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see. Hold on. Y'all smash that like button for me, man. You know, Andy finna get fed some UK bombs. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Eddie already got it lined. He got it lined up for him. Hold on. Let me see something. So he's gonna blow him up like some cheap dope. He already did it. He said he the best lightweight in the world. He said he'd pick him to be Shakur, Haney, Tank, everybody. He said he'd pick him to be every lightweight in the world right now. He'd pick him to be every lightweight in the world. That's what he said. Every lightweight in the world. And again, that's high praise for a dude that didn't have one one single professional fight. But I just think that that's how high Eddie is on him. He that high on him. I guess he with the right guy. I mean, if if, if if I'm a fighter and, and my promoter is feeling like I'm better than every lightweight in the world without me having even one fight, then shit, I, I think I went to the right guy too. So, I mean, best of luck to him, but we're going to see. Look at Regis already. His Paro. Yeah, so he undefeated dude. I think he got some. Let me, let me, let's, let's pull him up. Let's pull him up while we're here. Let me got it on the schedule already. I think his name Liam Paro or something like that, right? One of them damn limbs. One of them damn limbs. Thank you, trying to turn back. Shalom. Proceed. John Ryder nickname really gorilla. That's crazy. <laughs> I talked to Rabisi all the time. and not be Shakur today. Rabisi is a small person like Rigo. Jose, one of the most honest uh boxing supporters there is, bro. Salute to you, Jose, man. Appreciate you, man. You know, I like Robisi though, man. He won me over because he didn't try to build his pro career off of off of, uh an amateur win. And I got much respect for him for that. 
Tevin Farmer still boxes. Easy Mike, salute, fan. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Y'all smash that like button, sub to the channel, man. Let's run the likes up. If you ain't hit the like button, punch the like button for you, bro. Salute to Jose, man. You you solid, man. Uh, you, 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 you always keep it 100. Always, always. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you. Always adding the real to the chat, man. Salute to Easy Mike as well. And the other Mike. Mike, appreciate you in the cash app too, man. Yeah, y'all punch the like button. But uh, this Liam guy, Liam Paro, 23 and 0, 14 KOs, 5'8 and a half, 71 inch reach from Australia. He's a Southpaw. His last win was over Brock Jarvis, who was undefeated. He stopped him in one round. Whew, just made short work of him. His previous opponent was 20 and 0 with one draw. Uh, I don't know. I don't know this guy. I'm not going to lie. I hear it. I've been hearing his name for a while, but I ain't, I ain't been able to see him fight, y'all. I ain't been able to see him fight yet, respectfully. I haven't seen him fight just yet, y'all. I haven't seen him. Man, appreciate that, Mike. Man, much love and appreciation. Salute to all y'all, man. I appreciate the uh the new supporters. I don't call y'all subscribers, y'all supporters, and we family over here. So I appreciate y'all being a part of this build that we got going on, man. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep building. Jim, where you at, my bro? Salute to my bro, Jim, and that cash app. Always showing love. Always holding your boy down. Always supporting the grind, man. Much love and appreciation, Jim. I had these issues since the Caleb plan fight so and i like I and we ain't never got a box again well right. well 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 i already been getting these but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do oh, bro jim my bad i didn't mean to play that canelo clip that was just in the stash <laughs> that's just in the stash yeah billy joe and plant hey let him go at it man why not no billy joe let him Let's see where he falls center, bun. He got his eye broke because he kept ducking. That boy ducked right into – how you going to duck into an orbital fracture? That man ducked into an orbital fracture, bro. Like, he ducked, he ducked and broke his bone, bro. Just think about that. <laughs> Canelo has a lot of issues, right, right physically. So, look, man, salute to y'all. We're going to talk about this a little bit, too. I'm not going to diss him. I'm trying not to do that. You know, I do tell my little jokes. It's just jokes. I I, I support boxing. I always got to make sure people understand that when they hear. Because sometimes people will see a picture and start crying and whining. I'm just joking. But we are going to revisit this this guy for, for a split second, for a quick second. Because um, I feel like his fans are in denial. I feel like his fans are in denial. And again, every fan base, every fighter has fans and supporters right alike every fan base i mean every fighter has their diehard fans but every fan base has those fanboys too right and i'm only speaking to those guys not the guys that are realistic when it comes to canelo man this man been fighting forever bro he's been fighting forever he's been fighting forever so even though he's only 32 he's old in terms of boxing because of the mileage you got to think, yo, the man was taking, he was professionally boxing before he was old enough to drink. You know what I'm saying? Way before. Like, just think about that. 15 years old, bro. Golly, like 50, a 15-year-old pro. Can you name another 15-year-old pro, yo? Can you name another pro that you know, another fighter that turned pro at 15? I can't. For me, I don't know another one off top. My, I don't. You know what I'm saying? So... I always say that I say I'm saying all this to say, man, he he's been fighting forever. Uh, let, let me pull him up too. let me pull his let me pull his resume, up, man. Let me pull Sa Saul, man. Let me pull up Saul. Let me pull up Saul, man. People don't get it when they come to him. They always make it personal. Like when they stay favorite fighter, like let's just put something in perspective when it come to Canelo, man. Yeah, let's let this guy is 59 2 and 2 bro 59 2 and 2 i mean you got six, you got 63 fights dude 63 bro he got 63 fights y'all he's been pro since 2 Thousand man, let me be very specific. He's been pro. His pro debut was October 29th, 2005. Yeah, it's 2023. 
Do the math. He turned pro October 29th, 2005. This man is this man been fighting for that long. Just think about that. This dude, a whole life, he, he, a whole grown man in boxing. His career, how long his career, man? You got to be kidding me, man. He had a couple of wars. You know what I mean? He had a couple of, you know, some gruesome fights. But think about the training camps put miles on you that you necessarily can't see. That You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is there's nothing, there's no hate involved when somebody says Canelo Alvarez is slowing down. There's no hate involved if you're saying that's a fighter on the decline. And I just want to bring, just point, point something out for the people that just is unwilling to accept that this is a dude slowing down. Like somebody said they think the fight went the distance because he wanted to get the fans a fight. Like go to hell, man. Go to hell. Instead of just saying, yo, he, he you, I'm, I'm a firm believer in saying like, you know, people like, all right, for example, let me use an example for a second, right? David Benavidez and Caleb Plant fall. It went to decision. People said it went to decision because Benavidez couldn't knock Caleb Plant out. No, I don't think it's that he couldn't knock him out. He just didn't knock him out because he definitely had the power and all of those things to knock him out. You get what I'm saying? Just Caleb Plant held on, which is essentially what John Ryder did. Canelo has the power and things to knock him out. But at the same time, I felt like he couldn't have knocked him out if he wanted to because I felt like he tried. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I just don't know, man. This dude nose is bruised up, forehead all bruised up. It's a fight, so I get it, bro. I get it. I ain't making too much out of it. It's a fight. But, bro, you're getting older. And, and I just want to say to the super fans of his that's in denial, by you saying that he's not getting older, it just makes it worse for him because you know you see less of what you used to see in that ring. And if you're telling me this is the same guy from some years ago, then you sadly mistaken. And you setting your man up for failure because the same people that don't think he's declining are the same people that think he's going to beat Beaver in a rematch. Those are the same people that believe he won three or four rounds in that fight. Those are those same people. I'm just here to say, man, father time is undefeated. We should all know that. When you, I know he's 32, so you feel like he should have a lot more years left. But when you, when you start when your pro career, you know, what? five years or more before the average guy you get what i'm saying you just accelerated your, your your process your aging process you get what i'm saying so on one end it looks good ah he was pro since he was 15 he turned pro at 15 it, that's cool while you coming up but then when you when you look back and it's 18 years later and you 32 years old bro and you got 63 fights you don't look like the same guy respectfully and you shouldn't because you are human so un unless this guy is some type of superhuman, super athlete, which I do not think he is, then it's absolutely okay. And it's absolutely normal for a guy with 18 years of pro experience as a professional boxer, a sport that you can't play with 63 fights is absolutely completely normal for that fighter to be slowing down. There's nothing wrong with it. He's slowing down, man. Y'all go somewhere with that. They be killing me with that. They be ready to argue and fight. Yo, he is slowing down. Ah, you know, it was maybe it was his wrist. No, maybe you just need to stop lying to yourself. He's getting older. Straight up. He's getting older, bro. Straight up, he's getting older. It's just what it is, bro. He's an older 32. Because he you look at the average 32-year-old fighter and they don't got nowhere near 60 fights. Gotta put that in perspective, bro. He put some, he put a lot of work in early, bro. He put a lot of work in early, but he getting older, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, that nose. I know that, that that just like his nose being red like that, just like it's sore. John John Rogers is like it hurt for, for, for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Original Skywalker salute fan. Appreciate you pulling up. I have a left side. That's his weakness. <laughs> now nah, you're probably right. Salute to you, fam. Appreciate you pulling up. I'm telling you, Dimitri Bieber let Canelo off the hook. I think he didn't want to embarrass him. And Bieber loves the box. He loves that box. And I'm telling you, he just loved it to put on the display. Yeah, before his fans see it. And they still going to make an excuse. Is that right? Frank Sanchez for Chris Ariola is coming. I did hear that. 
appreciate you, Adolfo. You're not gonna fight Bebo, Charlo, or Bubu, or Morel. And it's crazy. Somebody thinking he gonna um somebody think they setting the table for an Edgar Belinga fight. Somebody think they setting the table for an Edgar Belinga fight, bro. He was just trying to go to Disney with Canelo. He was trying to finish him. He was outboxing that man. Then he's outboxing the hell out of him, bro. So he finna be a schizo. <laughs> hey, what's up, the fool? Takes a punch to give a punch, tears you up. Yeah, no left side. Right, that's interesting, bro. That's a good point you're making. They room rug and he wouldn't know. Right, right. All facts, though. Forehead throbbing, right? I'm telling you, head hurting, anything. You're like, man, his lips sore. Ash said his lips bruised up. <laughs> yeah, he'd be good. He, he was getting socked to him. Socked to him. Y'all give me two seconds. Let me grab something to drink. Y'all punch that like button for your bro sub to the channel. If you're new, man. Let's keep rocking out. All right, I'm back, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. That's on the one street. I need to see another dude. <laughs> nose look like you snore jalapeno juice. Yeah, that nose look like it hurt, bro. That nose is definitely sore, bro. But he went out there, he won. He battered John Ryder nose all up. But yeah, I just wanted to say, like, there's no hate involved. I'm not a hateful dude when it comes to this boxing. Like, I like to enjoy the conversations, but I like to be realistic. I love putting things in perspective as I did with him. See, I'm not a person that's just telling you Canelo is a bum and he trash and he flat footed. And I could go in about how I think his head movement is not what it once it used to be. I don't think the upper body movement is what it once used to be. I think his knees are bothering him even more. I think his knees are getting even worse. He's known to have elbow issues in the past. Like if you've ever seen him train, He's known to have sleeves on both the knees and, and his elbow. You get what I'm saying? So this is the face of boxing right here. The face when you ace, man. And he won. And I ain't trying to say he got beat up and nothing like that. Now, nah, he went out there and did what he was supposed to do to John Ryder. But in this case, he didn't even do what he was supposed to do. Because I'm sorry, y'all. We hold everybody else to this high-ass standard. Why? What, what was this knockout at that was everybody was talking about? Him knocking John Ryder out. I'm trying to understand, like. What happened to that? People forgot about that. Y'all do know John Ryder was knocked out by Nick Blackwell that I believe was got the, got the hell beat out of him by, uh, he got the hell beat on by, uh, Chris Eubank, I think. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. He got the hell beat out of him by, by Chris Eubank. Let me see. He got stopped. John Ryder got stopped, y'all, back in 2015. May 30th, 2015, in the seventh round against Nick Blackwell, who had three losses at the time. 16, 3, and 1, Nick Blackwell was. Nick Blackwell is the guy that got stopped by Chris Eubank. I could have swore. Yeah, Chris Eubank. Damn, that was the last fight he had. Yeah, Chris Eubank stopped Chris. Chris Eubank stopped Nick Blackwell Jr. in 10 rounds. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know. I just felt like he was supposed to be able to knock this dude out. Personally, y'all. I do. WBC holding up undisputed. I want second five. Bebo fight Canelo again. It's all for his head. And I hope Bebo ring walk music is this. <laughs> right. Right. And he is holding it up. And it's crazy, Ash, because it's like they're, they're allowing him to hold up things at 68 and they're blocking undisputed fight at 75 with Bebo and Better Beeb. It's wild what they're doing, bro. You only let him hit you in the nose and forehead. All nose and forehead. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah, he going to get his just over here. Ghost was good with it. I was just over here cooking up, cooking about your boy, man. You should have stopped him. I think so, too, y'all. I ain't lying. I think he should have stopped him, yo. I think he, I think he should have stopped him. John Ryder gets stopped years ago and has improved a lot. Since the time today, he's one of the best. <laughs> Yo, my boy Andy Robisi, Keyshawn, four times. Everybody else, Keyshawn. Yeah, man, we're going to see, though. Because, look, he is here now, so let him get some fights. I want to see his fights. I want to see how his, um, his career materialized. I do like I like what I see from uh, uh, Andy Cruz uh, as an amateur, so I want to see how he, how he transitioned as a professional. D-Ray Promotions, what's good, family? How you feeling? 
said that's what he said oh oh yeah you yeah, talking about andy cruz yeah he called tank average he told tank he average and he said um Keyshawn davis is a bitch called Keyshawn a biatch though because he was responding to tank responding to dudes to michael benson saying he got more skills than tyson and pe people will lose their mind but y'all don't even realize and take it to the fact fact that he's a much smaller smaller guy you know, a heavyweights, not that they don't have skill. I just think less skill is required to be successful. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, all it takes is that punch. But thinking them lighter weights, you forced to be skilled in a much different way because, uh, you know, you know, even one punch to end a fight is not at the same level of a heavyweight in terms of heavyweights. A PBC fighter not stop their opponent. The slander is heavy. Right, right. All facts. Yeah, and they said it was an exhibition. He beat a performer. Is that the one he fought with no headgear, Ghost? Where he dropped, where he knocked dude out? Is that the one where he knocked dude out, Ghost? And he ain't had no headgear on either. He had no headgear. He ain't had no headgear on. I just would never look at it like that. I just would never look at it like that. I think Tank is one of the, by far, li listen, I'm going to just say it this way before I ain't even got to get into it, right? I'm going to just say it this way. The fact that people are even trying to compare a lightweight to a heavyweight speaks volumes. I'll leave it at that. The fact that anybody in any regard, any way, shape, or form is comparing a 135 pounder to a to a to a, a heavyweight champion of the world, that's speak volume. So I ain't even gotta say who better, who I, I don't care. You know what I mean? They they both them dudes. I like I live five miles from King Kong, ghost. I go to this house and oh yeah, stroke crank, you really good, good. Yeah, man, don't got head uh, no more. But it looked like it, it didn't look uh let me say why well, I, I don't know it did it looked like it was a uh, it didn't look like no olympic fight or nothing like that it looked like a regular you know official fight with no head yeah with no head gear so and if it's the one where he knocked the dude out i seen it i seen it it's happened to Merrill brothers he's a good person salute to um um king kong man i keep hearing king kong a solid dude check tyson's record when he got out of the prison straight trash yeah man I, I, and I, I, at that point, man, he got to a point where his career just wasn't what it was supposed to be anyway, because you had you had leeches there. You ain't had people that cared about seeing you win. You had people that seen him as a meal ticket. You know what I mean? I think, um, you no, know, all these fighters got things about them that make them special. But I think the more we watch boxing, the more we tend to expect from fighters and the more we take away from the great. Because you had people tell you Tyson ain't never did nothing. So. I don't know. Boxing, you got a lot of tough critics in boxing, man. Tyson got me into boxing. You know what I mean, and he fought Miguel Buchel in his debut in school. And did he? That's dope. I reckon when he was 19, he was that dude was different. Prime Tyson is different. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, we all know it's, this is levels to, to the Tyson, man. He had like a he had like three different careers, two, three different careers, it seemed like Mike Tyson did, man. And I think, think what made him a, a special was how young he was when he was dominating. You get what I'm saying? I think just putting that into perspective alone makes him great. You get what I'm saying? Being that young, dominating and beating up these men like that. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, it's this documentary out there on Tyson, man. I forget which one. It's on YouTube. I got to find it. But it'll, it'll give you a different look on him as, in terms of the people that feel like he wasn't skilled or good. Shit, you shouldn't me if he wasn't one of the more skilled heavyweights out there. He was different. Dante all boxing talk, but again, I understand the resume and what people be saying with that though. I mean, can I wear like an old Tyson head move wasn't there? It wasn't, bro. It wasn't there because the model was the key facts. Once that was, you know, and that's the way I understand that story. Once he went, so did the greatness of Mike Tyson. Because I think that's where the love was at. You get what I'm saying? And I think that's what made that um that relationship a special one. You, you know, he had somebody that really cared about him and wanted to see him be great and him win. And once that element was removed from Tyson's career, you you got what you got. And I think he, I think the level, I think he was still it to show an extreme level of greatness. Despite, think about how many fights he went into. Like where they, it was at point at one point they said they were sending this dude in fights medicated on you know what I mean all types of uh, you know uh, prescription meds and different things like that. Um, he wasn't training, you know, drinking, partying, like, you know what I mean? And he just think about what he was in. See, that's, that's why I'm all about perspective, right? Because when you factor in all of those things, he was not living a fighter's lifestyle, never. 
and he still was able to accomplish what he accomplished, I think that's what makes Mike Tyson great. Like, you get what I'm saying? For me, like my my um my assessment for him go deeper than just the, the resume, right? Because I just try to factor, and that's just only because I'm just do. So I always try to, I, I have to have a, a deeper, uh, you know what I mean, perspective on it. I got to be able to put things in order and say like, for a guy that ain't living fighter's lifestyle, never, and just lived all wrong. And then you was you was with tons of you know people just that just didn't care about you. He was getting robbed out of your money and all that. I was like that that you, you beat the odds a couple times over. You know what I'm saying? But it's still like on one end, he's like, damn, you underachieved. Could you think about the level of greatness? Had he still had the love where it needed to be? And that just goes to show you how important that element of boxing really is. Having somebody around you that really care about you, bro. You need that. When you held him to it, doesn't match up nowadays. When we grow up and learn more, we look at back how you held them to. It doesn't match up always. Sometimes it's like that, bro. He's right. Because like the longer shit, we definitely be different. Right. He definitely would have been different. Right. Their dudes just was for the money, bro. They just seen a meal ticket with Mike. Cheap, wildfire. What's good with it, fam? Nope. No hating. Y'all know over here, just dude don't do no hate. I'm training he was the only father you ever knew. Facts. 817. That love was there. William, old school. Salute, brother. Votes, UK. How you feeling, fam? One in trillion. Yeah, he was special. He's special in his own right. But I get it. The, the resume and things like that. That's fair. I understand that. I just like I think he was able to kind of bypass a lot of demons and still be successful. It's crazy, man. That dude had a wild career, man. Didn't he? Wild career. Yeah, no training. I think that was wild and still winning, man. Old George Foreman gave prime Holyfield better fight than Tyson. Right, right, right. Styles make fights. Styles make fights. George Foreman was a big, big big goliath man he was a man that dude man didn't he uh, didn't he lift didn't he lift holy philip off his feet with one of the punches yo am i tripping didn't he do that in a fight that's right though but uh look again man um for me the lack of discipline was he was never gonna beat holy phil respectfully he was never gonna be holy phil not in the condition he was in and i ain't even talking about like physical condition i'm just talking about from a mental aspect preparation standpoint he wasn't gonna be holy phil in my opinion and that's just me being older, like looking at it now, assessing it like the younger version. I used to still say, ah, if he did this, if he did that, he would have beat him. No, the older, the grown me understands like that. He just it was like a preparation, the mental different things, a multitude of things and reasons why he wasn't going to beat no Evander. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like you can get by and beat certain guys, you know, cutting corners and things like that. But I just don't believe Holyfield was a guy that was going to lose to him. You know what I mean? And that that version of Tyson at all. You know what I mean? Evander was a dog. And I had to be, grow up to realize how good he was, too. Salute to my bro, Mike, man. Always showing love. Always putting that cover in the chat. But, yes, I agree. Uh, Prime, I mean, an old George Foreman definitely gave him a different fight, man. Totally and different And we ain't never got to box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back. But, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to my brody Mike, man. Much love and appreciation, Mike. Always showing love. Just the time I can only see six. Mr. Monson, I say nothing back. David Morrell, calling my we straight now. Yeah, I want to see when he finally do respond to it, man. Feel bad for Ike Abucci. I remember him. They um, boxing rhythm got a dope piece on him. To Larry Films, you should go. You should go check it out. Rhythm boxing, I think it's called. Rhythm boxing, I think that's what it's called. But yeah, the hell of a boxer, and they tell his story, bro. I don't know if you've seen it. It's dope, though. It's a dope uh. Dope joint, yo. Spins on us from father. You're right. Yeah, Tyson. Tyson needed that love, bro. Tyson needed the love. He needed that love, bro. Nah, nah, bro. Nah, you good. Nah, Mike, man. You was the family, man. Tyson's my guy. Man, you know, and this is the boxing forum, man. All boxing on deck, man. Nah, you ain't messing up the chat. Never, bro. Always add to the chat. Nah, Louis the Holyfield got that shine. Right. Right, right. Yeah, because um, I think Holyfield was special, too. And again, Mike, I had to grow up to realize how good um both Lennox Lewis and Holyfield was. Because, you know, me being a younger dude, they both be my god. Then, like, neither one of them dudes as a young guy. I was like, man, I don't like them dude. <laughs> Salute to my bro votes, man. How you feeling, bro? I used to be bad as hell. They beat my band, man. I pissed off. You be sure messing with Morrell. It's going to be it's gonna be a tough fight, James Tony, Smoke Holyfield. Yeah, James Tony was a damn good fighter, too. Saying, hey, I grew up to truly appreciate Holyfield. Me too. Him and Lennox Lewis, bro. And that's just me. That's it, that's where it just started to build my appreciation for the sport because I it made me understand how wrong I had it. 
See, because back then, I definitely was a boxers fan. Talking like that, I was a boxers fan. But when I transitioned to a boxing fan, then I started to understand and just give people their credit. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy that I just only been here for over a year. But I feel like my train of thought has always been like this since since I've been truly engaged in watching this sport as much as I've been watching it. Damn, it was sad. It's crazy, right? Man, I, I hated it, man. Yeah, if if Lennox, I mean, if Holyfield didn't have that issues with his heart, if he had him heart that heart situation or some some type of condition with his heart, something like that, that was causing him fatigue and fights and stuff. I think he would have been even more dangerous, bro. He'd have been even more dangerous. I think a lot of people don't know that. Similarly, hey, so get in the ring, let your fist speak. Talk to him, man. Canelo looks almost as bad as Oscar Valdez. Dad, he falls court. <laughs> right. And Jones was good with it, family. How you feeling? Vander had his number. Yeah, yeah. And Evander just was better, bro. And you see me, I could admit that now. Like young, I was like, nah, Tyson should have did this or nah. He was just better, the better man. <laughs> Holy Phil was the better man, bro. That's all that was. I didn't watch that one. I'm gonna go check it out. And that you said it now. Holy Phil proves how great Bolt was. So I love him. Yeah, man. Holy Phil, all them dudes was dogs. Bruce and Holy Phil personality wasn't as engaged. Evander wasn't a talker, but his heart made you love him. Lewis from all the yeah. All the way from the UK had a different feeling about our country and athletes. That's that's true. Valid points, bro. Remember, people put on Ray Bo beat up Holy Fell out of shape, man. Boy, every way that they was around today. Razor Rudder could give a lot of these dudes hell, won't he? Riddick Bo would stop a lot of these dudes, if not damn near all of them, man. Big big daddy, big daddy Bo. Big Daddy Bo was punching like a kila. <laughs> big Daddy Bo put you in the dirt. Big Daddy Bo was sleep so right? Big Daddy Bo was that guy, man. But yeah, y'all, when it comes, I just wanted to, you know, be clear, man. There's no hate on Canelo. God, it's 32 people in the building. Could y'all all hit that like button for your boy? Sub to the channel if you new. Share the live if you can. Rock out with your boy. Appreciate y'all. But then, yeah, man, so... This picture was just a, just a little jokey joke, but he did look like this. This ain't no Photoshop, none of that. But it's a fight, bro. It's a fight in which he won, but it's a fight in which he looked vulnerable. It's a fight in that he looked his age. He looked older than his age. It's a fight in which, in which I seen that his reflexes didn't look, look the same. Because and, and to be perfectly honest with y'all, if his defense and reflexes was exactly the same as it was, like, let's say maybe – after the Mayweather days, after he, you know, he's improved when he showed you he improved defensively. If he was still that level defensively, I don't think his nose would have been all marked up like that. Cause this, you never really see this with Canelo. And it's not like he don't get hit, but that just lets you know he kept got getting hit in the same exact spot over and over with the similar punches over and over. So that lets you know that the head movement and the upper body movement is not as sharp as what it was two to three, even four or five years ago. It just wasn't. It's not. It's not, and they're just being real. That's just being real. But if you don't see that, that's because you don't want to see it. You know what I'm saying? But it only makes it worse because as he continue to take fights, who is he going to fight? Like, you you can't tell me, unless you're just being a Superman fan, you can't tell me that you're confident that he beats Bevo in a rematch at 175 after what you've seen since he lost to Bevo. He's had two fights since then. Triple G, he's fought G40 again. At 68, G40 looked at horrible. Then he turned around and he fought John the Gorilla Rider. And he got took the distance. Get what I'm saying? It, ah, bro, those two performances, neither one of those performances beat Dimitri Beagle. So, again, like, when people saying, ah, he's going to beat him in a rematch, what are you basing it off? Because then, yeah, you had two fights in which they both went the distance. So you got 24 rounds, two complete full fights worth of film to watch. So again, what are what are people basing this whole he's going to beat Dimitri Bevo off? Because the last time we seen them in a ring together, it wasn't even close. And this this guy, I ain't even going to disrespect him. I'm going to just I'm going to just speak on it. This guy said he dominated him for five or six rounds. He yeah. Canelo Alvarez said he dominated Dimitri Bevo for five for the first five or six rounds. And then he had the nerve to say, if you go watch the fight, what? What? I don't need to go watch the fight again to know you ain't down. You, you didn't dominate not one solitary round, let alone five or six straight rounds. Man, you had to be smoking. I don't know what you're smoking, but you 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 dominated no part of that fight, bro. You got dominated. I don't know if you was there mentally. I don't know what you seen, 
But you ain't dominate that man at no portion in the fight. Now, think about what you're saying. If you dominate him five or six rounds, that's half the fight. Then why wasn't it a draw? Or Why wasn't the score? Nah, the scorecard still was probably a little closer than it should have been. But you got dominated, bro. You ain't dominate this man for no half a fight. You ain't even want, you, you blew your load after about four or five rounds. You get what I'm saying? Blew your load. Old, old said it been flushes to do. Yeah, right. Facts, bro. All facts. All facts. Holly was a problem. They better, man. I'm telling you, man. They better leave him alone. Yeah, he need to rest, yo. He need to rest. Call Makabu at the Badu Jack knocked him out. Talking out stumble and hurt by an old rider. I can't, somebody else said that, Ghost. Somebody else said that. He dominated his hands with his face, <laughs> right? BC. Riddick Bowe is my favorite one of the generation. Well, hold the fair in second place, right? Riddick Bowe was a dog too, man. Them them older them heavyweights of yesterday was 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 dogs for real, for real, bro. They were some special dudes, special athletes, special talents, man. Oh, yeah, Canelo ass, man. Canelo was getting his face beat up a little bit, man. And, again, I think he just was re getting hit with the same punches over and over. And I don't think he normally gets hit with those punches. The younger version of himself. Like, he, he's he's uh, it's slippage there and it's everything. But if people – um, if people – uh. If people don't want to admit to it, then they ain't they ain't gonna they ain't gonna see it. Just got it. And again, man, Father Tom is undefeated and wear and tear is real. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to be underestimated. And all fighters going all fighters gonna go through it. That's why you hear that's why you hear guys like Tank saying he's trying to retire. So ain't nobody trying to Ain't nobody trying to still fight when they're less of themselves. You get what I'm saying? Nobody wants to fight forever. And then you, you fighting when you less of yourself and you don't have to. So he's trying to position himself to win enough early enough in his career where he ain't got to be fighting forever, bro. He ain't trying nobody trying to be getting punched in the head forever. They already have crazy fever allowing this to be a damn occupation of theirs getting punched in the face. Could you imagine that? <laughs> That's what they do for a living, bro. Get punched in the face. That's crazy. That is crazy. Let's see, legs, stomach, rider just didn't have enough. Right, I'm going to go back and check for it. I might go look it up because I know somebody else caught it. Any versus Lone Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Nah, I got to watch that because what I'll do is I'll probably watch it and uh, come back and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I got to watch that. Uh, I got to check it out. I got to check it out. I got to check it out, Ghost, for sure, for sure. St. Canelo takes, you know, retires with another L. I think so too. Unless he completely try to avoid it, Jim. My manager trying to rust up Earl. Right, right, right. You, you, bro. They think we don't see it, but you know what? You know what I really believe. Eight one seven. You know what I really believe? I believe that's not gonna work. And it's funny you brought that up because one part of the the you know one part of this live I did was gonna touch on. I know y'all all seen the interview now with Earl and um. You know, his girl, that sit down that they did. And y'all see that that boy still look like he in shape. So as pe pe far as people being, um, you know, as um, far as people being, uh, damn, I just lost my train of thought. It's so much stuff going on in my head right now. <sighs> Man, I said Canelo's on a sharp decline to the plant fight. And his fans came at me crazy. Yeah, they just in denial. This and denial. Can I was to take with Fury taking because he be looking gas, right? Don't he? Don't he, Mike? And I think again, I don't, I don't feel confident about him beating the Benavidez after seeing what he did and how he looked against John Ryder. I seen him get tired in the back half of the fight. I just seen John Ryder too tired and didn't have enough offensively to offer to do anything about it. You know what I mean? To your ass whooping. <laughs> nah, facts. I'm telling you though. Cut up, like drop, man. I'm telling you telling you so i'm telling you i'm telling you bro so again i think at 817 i think it might backfire i think we talking about something that might backfire on bro he playing around with the wrong thing and i just don't think it's gonna it's gonna go well for him hear what eddie hearn said about sparks robbery nah what'd he say bro what'd he say that was, that was that he, said. he works out miss joette but they out here talking about he fat people making videos talking about he out of shape Y'all not even content creators at this point. The people that do that, I just want to put that out there. 
if your whole if you if you pushing a gimmick as a content creator that's weak if you if your thing is creating stories that's not there like earl spence is fat putting pictures with his face all bloated knowing it's not like that that's that's not content I just, i'd say this it's not creative content at all it's pretty weak it's like you lying to people and just to get them to click the video i'm tired of saying that. i'm about to start recommending that youtube don't show me everybody that's clickbaiting i'm about to i'm about to block everybody that clickbait i'm telling i'm dead serious i'm about to start blocking everybody that clickbait i'm dead serious i hate seeing it they be messing up my mood bro people be tripping with this clickbait and it's getting annoying man and they just do it with with a smile on their face they sleep good at night too click let me clickbait them let me say earl is fat and he gained all his weight and he really ain't trying to fight like that like, yeah and they'll watch it they'll watch it like i, I don't like it Need to wall and see what sticks. I, I don't know. I'm gonna beat this. Head. Right, it's not gonna work. Eight one seven. I I promise you. I, just, I my honest opinion. I don't think that's gonna work. And I think he's gonna get exactly. He's just gonna make it worse. He versus Martin fighting. Told him he be taking them belts. Oh yeah, that's what he did. I ain't know that. Maxon got the evidence. Yeah. Thanks, by Morel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I seen a picture surfacing on Twitter that they met before. I did see that. I did see that. He does cardio every day, and that's it. Hey, and eight one seven. That's that. You get what I'm? I mean, um, pardon me, pardon me, Schizo Paul. You get what I'm saying? That cardio every day, so he's staying in shape. You dig what I'm saying? You dig what I'm saying? Send a bun. Bums looking at David like it's not. Yeah, she like David. She like I like David. David on the way up. Yo, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because it, it, it make you not want to do content. I'm going to be honest. Again, today. I'm dead serious. I ain't want to do a live today, y'all. That's how I know it's time for me to just start blocking blocking this stuff. It'd it, it be annoying. And I know y'all see this stuff, too. I ain't calling nobody. I don't do none of that. That's weak, though. I just I hate. I'm tired of seeing it. It's annoying, man. You know, David and Rail, your mother, yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot, especially with them being that close to each other. Y'all have obviously exchanged pleasantries. You had to know from that point on he's a fighter, ain't like you just gonna forget about him. The one from Cuba, mm hmm, mm hmm, trans that lot, yeah, yeah, me neither. You just be, but you, you know, you be scrolling and it'd be like, man, I ain't clicking it though, I ain't clicking it, mm -mm. I ain't clicking it. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. That's right. That's why I've been so so scarce. Yeah, I'm telling you, it'd be wild. I'm gonna I'm gonna assure all y'all in the building now as y'all punch that like button for you, bro. You ain't never gotta worry about me clickbaiting. Integrity overviews any day of the week, y'all. Integrity overviews any day of the week, and your boy just is all about the boxing conversation anyway. So I'm not even good with creating headlines that get people here. My shit's be straight to the point and we gonna build and we gonna cook and that's how I be. But it's, you know, when we just sharing this space with other people that don't share the same mentality, get a little bit draining. Cause it's like, bro. And you know what I mean? Cause what I'm saying is we living in a weird time where the truth is drowned out by the, by the, the plethora of bull that's all over the place. And it got a ten. It's like it, the market is oversaturated with lies, and it kind of drown it drown out the truth. Get what I'm saying? Especially when you from the ground up trying to build, and you see people that they take their situation for granted, and then they become lazy, and then it's like clickbait, and then it's like, oh man, yo, it's frustrating. Right, man, and it's like, oh, just talk to boxing though. Don't put you don't have to do that, bro. When you don't push narratives, I swear you don't. That's why I don't have the only narrative I truly want to push is that we can support fight, and that's not even a narrative. It's a good narrative, right? It's a good train of thought. Support the fighter, win, lose, or draw. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But narratives can be stressing me. It be blowing me, y'all. Y'all smash that like button for you, bro. And Omega Red Salute family. I'm promise y'all that. Like, look, we could have these boxing conversations with the best of them, y'all. But I ain't never clickbaiting to get y'all here, and I ain't trying to waste nobody time. I'm all about trying to create a dope conversation within the real, authentic content that's here. And it takes some creativity. I see why people don't, because everybody ain't creative, but. You at least gotta try, bro. All that um, mm -mm, that that um, 
lying to the people i nah bro too much respect for the people and myself to be playing like that we're gonna build over this way no i mean that's why i don't use no name no names involved they and people know who they are that stuff be corny and they laugh at it because i see when people get called out they be laughing <laughs> like uh whatever have at it but man so yeah man earl did break his silence i know y'all did see the um the interview with him and his his girl you know his, his lady salute to them salute to ao and uh you know look he's, he, he feel like it's all crawford or nothing pretty much i i was gonna play it but i ain't gotta play it just to sum it up it's all or nothing you know what i'm saying he touched on a lot of different family things and opened up which was dope but what people really wanted to get to is how, what's going on with him a fight and what's like what he been up to it's good to know that he's in shape and i feel like if it's ever going to be a fight that he participates in at 47 it's going to be crawford if not the good thing for EJ, I, he can go to 54 and be great. And I've always said that. He can go right to 54 and continue to be great. His his level of greatness, his story isn't done at 47. He's blessed enough to have the size and, you know what I mean, the talent to go up a weight class. His his, his he's not his limit is not at 47. Get what I'm saying? And I, I can understand. It's like imagine seeing the finish line right there after you done put in all that work to get there. And it's right there. You're going to do everything in your power to try to make that happen. So I'm just also, I, I'm trying to, again, understand that. Why would you wait? And I think that's why. Because you you this close to doing what you said, what you set out to do since you be, became a pro boxer. And you, like I said, you're just so close, but so far away at the same time, right? Now, there's really one fight. And, and then he said he was on the phone with Crawford for, for like 30 minutes or so. And. Their team still negotiating is look the talks is looking good. The reason why that might be a plus more so than anything else, because stuff went quiet for a while. And I always said this. I don't think nothing is going to get done as long as they trying to. And it's on both sides. As long as they trying to one up each other on the social media, Crawford say something, Spence got to try to prove his part. It, it does. It doesn't matter. They both accountable for that. Rather no matter which way you run with it right but i said this the minute they stop trying to one-up each other on social media and trying to prove that who's lying and who's telling the truth who's real and who's not instead of trying to prove it and this is no disrespect but we know it's a ton of trolls instead of in a, in a in a sense you're trying to prove something to a bunch of people that's trolls and don't care anyway when in reality that what y'all should be doing is doing what you're doing now talking to each other behind the scenes with everybody out the business where you can actually make something happen and that and now, as a result, I think it, in a weird way, it got a better chance of happening now than it ever did when we was all discussing it. You get what I'm saying? I think the fact that it died down in that way and they got quiet, something must be going on where <clears throat> they trying to work it out. And and again, I think Earl don't do everything in his part to get it. But if worse come to worse, you would just be a little have some ring rust to deal with. And like I said, I guess when you Earl and you've been thrown from your car that waiting waiting a little longer for a fight is just probably ain't something that that's gonna bother him you know what i mean him putting things in perspective him getting thrown from the car i think made him look at life a, a lot differently too so i think he was able to learn put things in perspective understand what's in front of him and i think that's why he's as patient as what he's being with this situation because he like look all that stall tactics if that's what's really going on that shit ain't gonna work i want this fight i'm gonna get this fight i like that approach that's what it is that's what it is go for it bro but like i said his level of greatness don't stop at 47. And long as he understand that, he fine. He fine. Right, man. Appreciate you, Ghost. You already know, bro. Appreciate you, my bro. Man, yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, man. People weird too, man. You already know. I know 817. And I aim, I aim to 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 be the to, to stand out from the rest just by being genuine and authentic at every at back. You know what I'm saying? Even if I don't hit a home run today. We gonna hit one tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? But we damn sure ain't gonna be lying in here. Told us what happened when his mouthpiece came out both times. Yeah, because it, uh, he spoke on it before, Miss Joette, but so many people, because they would rather run with something negative so they could have a video to make about the mouthpiece, they wasn't listening to what he said the first time. Me too, I'm still learning them too. And I might do a different live, y'all, that might have nothing to absolutely do with boxing. I might not, I might, might not, because it, it's some stuff that need to be said, man. Gertz, what's good with it, bro? Appreciate you pulling up. What gets me is when people say they support a certain fighter and then they 
or every little trashy thing to post about them. Right. And I try to keep it away from the negative things, too, when it ain't boxing related. I try to stay away from like the, the headliners, the, you know, the messy stuff. I try not to in, indulge in that stuff. If I, I have to literally do some meat pulling and going down, down from the jump street or from coax him into a fight. And it's crazy, right? <clears throat> it's crazy. And that's crazy, yo. I hope we wrong, man. I swear. I was, and again, if he don't, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm past it. Like, I'm past, like, if it bothers me or not. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't. You know what I'm saying? I just like Spence having a, you know, opportunity to come out and speak on it and be straightforward and kind of just shut it down. Shut it up and shut it down. Like, nobody should have any more fresh questions after this. You know what it is. If they find a way to work it out behind the scenes because they actually talking to each other instead of us and the internet. That's why I think it can happen. Other than that, the hell with it. You know what I'm saying? The hell with it. But I, I I believe in Crawford more than people do. And I know that sounds crazy, but I believe in him more than people do. I don't share some of the same sentiments people do when it come to him in this fight. You know what I'm saying? I just, my grand scheme of things, not to even get into it because I'm not going to do that to y'all. I'll just say this. Ultimately, I don't think he was very familiar with the business ways of, of a PBC, which led to a fight not happening. Instead of looking at it as an opportunity that he was getting and they was going to try to make sure he got more money than he ever got, he was looking at it as no guarantee. I ain't used to that. Y'all trying to screw me over. You get what I'm saying? It's just that simple. You weren't used to that way of business and it caused you to not understand it. So you wasn't able to make the decision that would have been best for you, which is to do business with them and make that fight. That's just that for me. Without calling nobody, no duck. I don't even care about that. It's just what it is. And like I said, just to just to cap off on this, Earl Spence greatness don't stop at 47. It don't. So there's more fights. Next man up. You know what I'm saying? Next man up. Next man up. Healthy fears. Understandable for Carl. I can't see going out like a coward. Too. Yeah, too much money and legacy to not take the fight. And you know what else I said too, Mike? Um, just to switch gears, like instead of even saying like whether or not he, if you, people think he's scared or a duck, I said this. Don't you think like him being the fighter, don't he feels as though he earned the fight? Right? You don't beat all these dudes up at welterweight. You knocking all these dudes out. You don't you got your belt. This dude got that. Don't you feel like you deserve that fight? Hell with well, who even, you know, duck talking, money, all that stuff aside. Don't you feel like you deserve that opportunity to be undisputed and potentially be able to be undisputed in two different weight classes? Think about what kind of histories on it in it for you if you potentially win that fight so that's the way you gotta look at it you deserve it yourself all bs aside don't you think you deserve a fight you know what i'm saying get yourself that fight and get the people that fight and you'll win you might not win in the ring but you're gonna win you get what i'm saying <laughs> you're gonna win you know what i'm saying you'll win you'll win i'd be more afraid of my respect and legacy being tarnished and going out as a coward my entire career overrides me being afraid of losing right that's real though that's, that's real though that's real though that's why i think a part of me feel like he's gonna try to make something happen because i think the ego is what 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 is going to say look it's weird right and this is just something i think the same thing that stopped it from happening now is probably going to be the same thing that's going to be the reason it does happen ego i don't think he's going to be able to live his, with himself i don't think he's going to be able to live with himself not just me trying to be optimistic, finding a reason for them to fight, but it is what it is. No, it's already lost. Now that's a fact, though. That's a fact, though. That is a fact. You already lost already, but we'll see how everything play out. Again, I wasn't going like try to make it. I wasn't going to drown y'all with that that conversation, but more so, EJ touched on some things that I think people wanted to hear him speak on. Always good to see these dudes show a different side of themselves, answer different questions openly, honestly, straightforward. And it is what it is. That's why I say Spence is an easy guy to root for. Pretty much straightforward. He don't do a lot of juking and jiving. You know what I'm saying? He's just a straight shooter, yo. And you just got to appreciate the approach. You know what I mean? He ain't a man in so many words, but I think he said a lot of things in that, in that sit down with his with his lady. So I think that was dope for both of them to have that in front of the people, man. And it's, it's cool. She got a channel going on. I'm pretty sure it's going to do great now that – um. You know, she got more people tuning tuning in to that interview and things like that. So it's always good, man. It's always good to see what's going on with these fighters. I'm just trying. I'm tired of being the person that I not even that I'm that person. I just don't want to add to the people that don't have the answers, but talk like I do all the time. 
Like, and that's why I think that's what people do all the time. Every time somebody, a move is made in boxing, we don't try to take the time to understand that move. We just ready to criticize it because it don't line up with, with what we see for that fighter in our head. But we don't take into the account. We're not that fighter, bro. We're not that fighter. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know. My perspective, my thought process just be a bit different, bro. Lando Finney, salute fan. Appreciate you pulling up. Much love and appreciation showing that love in the super chat. said, when the is I got a little sleeping spence. I ain't mad at it, bro. You know what I mean? Buzz a hell of a fighter, bro. Salute to Orlando. Appreciate you in the super chat, man. Much love and appreciation, bro. Salute to And we ain't never got to box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but, 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 but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. <clears throat> Salute to you, Orlando, man. Much love and appreciation, bro. Just save your money for Lorenzo next. Pay-per-view versus Rocha. <laughs> Miss Knockout Box 86 TV. Salute to the queen. How you feeling today? Appreciate you stopping through. Possible. Yeah, all, all things are possible, bro. And usually, you know, people be mad at people for their opinion, not just do. I ain't mad, man. Crawford is a, is a, is a hell of a fighter, right? I just think... The only time I've, I would have ever picked against him in terms of losing would have been this one fight. Other than that, I've never picked against him. I just think this is the only fight that he could potentially lose. But, you know, who knows, man. But I tell you, I will say this, and I'll be done with it. If it does happen, this would be one of the best years of boxing. No doubt. Like I said, this would be one of the best years. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, this is fight week for uh Roly Romero, man. So, uh, other news. The artist formerly known as Ro Roly Rolando Romero, you know what I mean? He, he about to be world champion, y'all. How y'all feel about that? Who would have thought? Roly Romero, y'all. Probably doesn't feel as though he'll turn his legacy. He's being judged by people that can't fight. BC, great point, bro. Great point. And people, some people truly don't care either, though. They don't even try to take the time. Listen, like, that's why I say... I noticed is the average person don't take the time to try to understand. They just critique the move and run with it. And they feel like because their scenarios sound good, that that's exactly what it is in their head without knowing the actual facts. I can't, I don't want to be that person. Get what I'm saying? And that's what people do. They don't have all that. You, you would just take some stuff, run with it, and it will be a full-blown opinion, but they'd pass it off as a fact because it sound real good or it sounds believable. People do it. It kill me with it, though. Man, it kill me. Still backing him when he ain't backing him up. 100% fact. It, it just make you scratch your head like, yo, bro, whatever. But we, boxing is in a good place, y'all. We getting good, we getting good fights. We gonna continue to get good fights. So look, we got, um, we got Roly coming up, man. That's one of the best fighters in the world. He coming to, he coming to shock the world. He coming to shake up the world, May 13th. Know what I'm saying? He coming to shake up the world, man. What is it, this Saturday? He coming to shake up the world, man. What y'all know about Roly coming out, being a champion? Who could have predicted it? 2023, Rolando Romero champion. <laughs> and at 140. You know what I'm saying? To the feelings, fighters, I, keep, I don't care. I'm cute, but my best, may the best man win. Right. <clears throat> Me too, in a weird way. I'm pulling for uh, Roly, man. You know what I'm saying? The artist formerly. I'm Miss Joe. I'm pulling for Roly to win. He going to beat Barroso. Watch. Wow, he going to beat Barroso. Um, salute to my bro Mike Biggs too. He has sent me the um the Roly the Roly. Um, he did he did an interview with the Last Stand podcast. I might say that for tomorrow, yo. I might I might do that for tomorrow, man. We might play that and break that down because I did have that in the description. I might have to revisit that one. A new thumbnail, fresh topic. I'm gonna add that back in there. And maybe did y'all did anybody see the um Roly interview from the Last Stand podcast? If y'all didn't see it, then I'll do it tomorrow. I'll add some other stuff in there as well, but that'll be one of the things we touch on because this is his fight week, so it would be fitting to play his most recent interview with him and Brian Custer. And he was talking crazy in there, too, a little spicy. You know how I really talk. You know what I'm saying? Special guy giving a scrimp. He got scrimp, Josh. He got scrimp. You know what I'm saying? Scrimp. There's reasons that you no know, hands out in this game, right? Right? Special needs has to be a winner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you seen it, Ashley? Right. So, look, uh, you saw it. Because it, I don't know. Y'all think we should chop it up? I mean, because I'll do it tomorrow. I ain't going to just have that. I'll have something else in there as well. Like, I'll have something else, you know what I mean, in the description as well. But I think that's something we could touch on, Roly and his last stand interview. 
because I don't want to cram it in the back end of this one. But I do, I do want to give him his just due. We'll give him some shine. You know what I mean? This is fight week. Smoke was good with no smoke TV. Was good with it, fam. Bet, bet. Say all I need to see is once. So yeah, man. We're gonna chop it up. Then we're gonna do that one. Then because we're gonna break that up. We're gonna break that down. And that's gonna be one of the things we talk about. Then Roly in the last stand podcast interview. And we're gonna do that for tomorrow, man. That and some other stuff, of course. But yeah. Yeah, right, right. That's why I ain't going to do it on this one. Right, so I'll save it for tomorrow for sure. But y'all know me. Like if y'all ever pay attention, I always try to have at least three to four and sometimes even more things in the description to touch on, man. Like, because we going to, you know what I mean? We going to talk about everything. That's how we do it. We going to talk about everything. A little study going to go out there and be a champion. Right, you know what I'm saying? Salute to everybody in the building. Right, Ash, we going to cook. We going to cook on that day. I'm going to save it for tomorrow for sure then. We're going to build on it. Rolando Roli Romero, you know what I'm saying? Becoming a champ. El, el, el Campeon, you know what I'm saying? El Campeon. <laughs> Roli, you know what I'm saying? The artist formerly known as Roli, Rolando, you know what I'm saying? Rolando. But uh, let me just wrap this up, too, because I think I touched everything I wanted to touch on today. Salute to Earl Spence and his girl, AL. Salute to him and his lady. Dope build, dope interview. If y'all didn't check it out, go check it out. You know what I'm saying? It's a good watch. You know what I'm saying? Spence just an honest dude like he always is. A real dude like he always is. Salute to him, man. Um, much respect. Um, those were just oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I don't I don't know if you I don't know if you know that, but just in case, just in case. But much love to to everybody, man. Um. We just going to keep pushing, y'all. I think we touched on everything. Keyshawn, your, your rival, if you, if they want to still call it that, your rival Andy Cruz is now signed with Matron. Eddie Hearn has got him touted as the best lightweight already with 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 no with no uh fights under his belt. So um we going to see. I like Andy Cruz. I think he got a real high uh uh, uh ceiling. I think he got a high ceiling. Salute to everybody in the building. Much love and appreciation, man. Spook, go ahead and roll. Yeah, man. Salute to 817. Peace to you, Brody. But yeah, so just wrapping up, man. Go check that build out if y'all didn't see that with, with Spence and, and his lady AO. It was a nice build. Um, the Canelo fans, look, the man is on the decline because he got over 60 fights and he's been pro for about 18 years. That's wear and tear. That's mileage. Think about the training camps, the miles. You know what I mean, you know, the countless rounds of sparring, intense sparring, all those different things, the actual wear and tear in the fights is he's slowing down because he's human, not because people are hating, because he's human. Nobody hates Canelo. I mean, I don't just do don't hate him. So I don't hate him or hate on him. I just think that's a guy that's physically slowing down a bit more. He still can be dangerous. He still can be very dangerous, but it just is what it is. You know what I mean, um, he don't. He just don't present the same set of challenges that that you know what i mean the same set of issues that he once did for people when he was a bit younger you know what i'm saying so as a result you know um it looks like the rest of the boxing world catches up to you a bit a bit and that's what happens when you just slow down you only decline because you put your body through hell you get what i'm saying this is a, a young man's sport and you you got You've got a, like a many as many fights for two careers, pretty much. You get what I'm saying? So anybody's going to slow down. Any human is going to slow down. That's not about hate. That's about really reality and accepting that reality and understanding that through, you know, people going to slow down. It's, this is the hurt business. You know what I mean? And it's 30 over 30. Get what I'm saying? Over 30 with over 60 fights, a couple losses, a couple tough, tough fights. I mean, all sparring is tough. You get what I'm saying? That's just wear and tear on the body, period. So he's going to slow down. And it ain't no hate. But if y'all want to run and call him the face of boxing, have at it. I think the people are just going to people setting themselves up to be hurt down the line. You know what I'm saying? Um, we still waiting to see what the best lightweight in the world is because it damn sure ain't no Andy Cruz without having one fight as a professional just yet, right? So Eddie Hearn's a hell of a salesman. He got Regis and Andy Cruz. I think those could be two additions to match room. I just, I'm just hopeful that Regis went with the entity that's going to not only provide him with the financial security that, that he seeks as a, as a fighter, as an individual, as a man, right? But I also want to see that him him give us the fights that we want. And I don't, I don't see, 
I think he's in a position to kind of do both, which would be great for us. You know what I'm saying? So we, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. We are most definitely going to see, man. Salute to the family, man. BC as well, man. Appreciate all y'all, man. Man, it's all good, man. It's all good. That's the most like every day for 18 years. That's crazy. Yeah, now, you get what I'm saying? And just constantly fighting and fighting and fighting. You're going to slow down a bit. You get what I'm saying? You're just going to slow down a bit. But that's it. I mean, he's still, he's not a bum. You know, I don't want to call him washed up. I'm not into that. I think he's still dangerous enough. But I think, uh, you know, the Benavidez is the Morales, Andres, uh, and B Dimitri Beaver rematch. I think all of those fights are extremely difficult fights for him to win. Whether or not he'll give us any of those fights remain to be seen. We all hearing him say Beaver, but we'll see what he do. The fact that now that he's saying if Beaver doesn't happen, that's enough right there. A doubt created for that not to happen. That's enough wiggle room right there for something because he's saying for what reason would the fight not happen and you get what i'm saying like what would cause that fight not to happen Beaver is not a uh he's not going to ask you to break the bank you're not going to ask all for all these unrealistic demands all he care about is winning so see what i'm saying so i but the fact that he said that lets me know that there's possibility that they they either going to come up with a reason find a reason not to fight that dude i don't see him rematching dimitri Beaver at 175 if he do i think he gets beat up possibly even more convincingly than he did the first time because I think he's slowing down. I think his body is wearing down. Exactly, uh, Will. I think his body is wore out, wore out and it's wearing down right in front of us at 32 years old, over 60 fights. It took him long enough. You get what I'm saying? It was one no overnight process. So something gradually happened over the fights. And you can see this every since about, you know, maybe you start to see him slowing down a bit. Caleb Plant. You know what I mean? He just started, kind of, you know, you see it, it's subtle, like just slowing down. You know what I mean? So I just don't, I don't know. I think all the, all those other guys are very tough fights for him. They, he can win, but they're going to be very tough. Very tough. Rudolph the Red. <laughs> you stupid, bro. You stupid, man. Salute to my bro, Judah Ben, man. So again, he's regressing because of the fights, the mileage, the wear and tear. Salute to, uh, Andy Cruz and Regis Proway both signed in the match room. That's dope. I hope Eddie Hearn moves both of those guys right. Not just Regis, both him and Andy Cruz. You know, Andy Cruz is talking spicy. He's very confident. And you know what? I want to see if people are going to keep the same energy, right? People give Keyshawn flack for being confident. But I want to see if they're going to give Andy Cruz any flack for being as confident as he is because he's a very confident dude. He's very called tank average. Just think about that. Andy Cruz called tank average, called Keyshawn a bitch. <laughs> and I like to talk too, because I know it's talking, it's fighter talking. It's all good and it's never nothing personal. You know what I'm saying? Sparks, we didn't know until after the fight. The two years judges were swapped for the two local. Got a hop. Fix was in, Talari. Fix was in, bro. Fix was in. Not too happy about that as well. And yeah, man, oh, he's gonna be investigating. Salute to you, bro. Appreciate you adding. I didn't know that, man. Salute to you, bro. I appreciate that. Appreciate you letting me know that. Appreciate that, fam. Salute to my bro to Laurier Films, man. Much love and appreciation. So, so yeah, man. I'm <laughs> baby girl, Keyshawn. So we're gonna see what's next. We're gonna see what's next for the boxing world. This is really fight week. Like I said, y'all. Yeah, um, I'm going to add that last stand podcast interview into my build tomorrow, man. So we're going to build on that, too. He was saying some very interesting things in there that I think y'all might want to hear. And we could break it down together how we always do, man. So I'm always serious and try to back it up. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got to. You got to. And he talked, talk, talk, talk. He, he liked that talk. He didn't slow it too. Bad knees, right? Right, Jose? Bad knees, elbow, the wrist. Like, he really, like, slow little piece by piece breaking down. And people just in denial. But we're going to see, man. But much love, much appreciation to everybody in the building, man. Y'all know we all about the, uh, the conversation over here. We ain't here to break the news. We're here to have a conversation and get boxing is just due. I think we did a hell of a job today giving boxing is just due. Another great build in the books. Salute to the fam and the cash app super chats, man. Y'all the real MVP. Salute to everybody that continues to pull up and support this grind. It is a hell of a one, and it can be mentally and physically draining, but I'm up for the challenge, man. And, you know, as a result, we're going to be back tomorrow at our time, 4 o'clock, how we always do, y'all. So, 
another dope wrap up with it with the with it with, with the dope family man i appreciate every last one of y'all y'all make sure y'all punch that like button on the way out salute to the queen miss joe i have a good night queen salute to my family the j y'all know y'all the just jdb the just do boxing family man and um y'all make sure y'all enjoy the rest of y'all monday too man Oh, you guys ain't too much alike. <laughs> and y'all two of the y'all two y'all two of the uh, biggest supporters, Mike. Man, y'all always here. That's why I got much love and res respect for everybody that tunes in to to hear me chase this passion of mine as we talk this boxing every day, man. So y'all the real MVPs. Everybody in here, sock that like button out, man. Make sure y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Make sure y'all tune in for the show tomorrow because we're going to have another good one, man. We're going to have another good one in the books. God self, my brody. Salute to you. Appreciate you, Jose. Salute to all y'all, man. Appreciate y'all bros, man. So look, man, I ain't going to hold y'all here. Y'all already know, man. All love to the family. I'm going to let y'all get to it, man. And we're going to get up out of here, man. Peace, y'all.